Hello, everybody, and welcome to the case of the Golden Idol. <laughs> welcome it. Oh, thank you for the immediate head pats. Oh my goodness. Hi. Hello, everyone. Happy, happy Sunday. Happy Easter Sunday. Happy Trans Day of Visibility. Uh, happy. I think those are the main days. I think I remember seeing something about an intergalactic trans day of visibility or something like that. I, d I don't know what that's about, but I'm here for it, whatever it is, because that sounds cool. But welcome in, everybody. How is it going? I hope everyone's had a lovely weekend. I will. I will start the stream as we mean to go on. Take a sip for a good beginning. There we go. I've got my Monster Energy Ultra Fiesta today. I'm having a big swig to start with, because I, I feel like I'm going to need all the brain cells I can get for this game. <laughs> but I'm so excited to play it. It's something that was uh, recommended to me when I was talking about how much I loved uh, The Return of the Obra Dinn, and how incredible that game was. And I've been told that this is, gameplay-wise, like in the style of gameplay, it's very similar. Maybe not so much thematically, I don't know. I have no idea what it's like thematically. I know it's a murder mystery thing going on. I think it might be supernatural-ish? I don't know. I've been very careful to not look up much because I, I love going into these not having a clue what I'm getting myself in for. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to play this because I've heard good things about it from a lot of my friends. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Also, Brie, congratulations on the first. Hello, hello. Hello, Gambler, welcome. Hello, Akire. Thank you for the, the snake sound alert and for the head pets as well. Lynn Starfall, lovely to see you. Hello. Hi, hello, Jack. Lovely to see you too. I hope everyone's having a, a lovely weekend. I've, I've done so much sleeping this weekend. It's been really nice. Uh, I also did some, uh, some singing yesterday. <laughs> Which, uh, which can be sought out if anyone's curious, if you have Twitter, but otherwise I'm not going to be like sharing it, because it was mostly just for the sake of doing something. I wanted to make sure I, 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 like, I wanted to push myself to do something, even if it wasn't perfect. And it very much was not perfect. It was not the best, but I posted it anyway. <laughs> Character development. I'm doing it. But, oh, thank you for doing the, the backseating command as well. Let me, let me pin that. Da, da, da. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the head pads too. I decided to be chibi today because I thought I can I could use the big head with all of the brain cells. I thought it would be good to have. Also, because it means I can do this. <laughs> and I thought for a game which has got a lot of investigating, deductive reasoning, figuring out what's going on. I want my magnifying glass for this. <laughs> I want to see what's happening. I want to observe all of the clues. Uh, also, uh, a little thing as well that I'll, I'll point out once and then just not mention again. Uh, I've actually decided to put a little donation goal on my stream overlay layout. I usually don't do this because I feel I feel guilty asking for anything, which... <laughs> There's a lot of imposter syndrome. I feel like I can't ask for anything. But I figured, you know what? If I just stick it up in the corner as a little cheeky thing, then if people want to, they can. If not, it's I'm, I'm not, like, pressuring anybody. So, yeah, I've put a little donation goal up there to help me get the Outer Wilds Collector's Edition because I was going to get it. But then with having to buy a new power supply for my PC and also with Xander's birthday coming up soon, uh, I can't really afford it, but I really want it. So I'm just, <laughs> I was just like, I'll just put a little, a little cheeky thing up there. If anyone wants to, then, then people can help me out. But if not, it's no big deal either way. Oh, and thank you for the haiku redeem as well. A detective haiku, ooh. Murder mysteries. We'll find who the killers are with my handy glass. <laughs> I, I had to shorten it to glass. I had one syllable left, but it's it's close enough, right? What else could I do for that? Uh, murder mysteries. Let us, let us find out what's afoot. 
Who could have done this? <laughs> I quite like that one, actually. That's a good one. Also, Water, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome in. Happy Sunday. I hope you're doing well. I hope everyone else has had a good weekend as well, though. I've had a, I've had a nice one. It's been a, it's been a good weekend. I've, I've relaxed a lot. I, I slept a lot today. And I also got an Easter egg. I have a, hold on, I've got it here. I can't reach it. Oh, look. I've got an Easter egg. <laughs> I haven't eaten it yet, but I have one. I got a chocolate Easter egg all wrapped up in foil, so I, I can have that either like as a midstream treat or like after the stream. I got chocolate. It's good. I need to sit up properly again. Ugh. There we go. I am back in my seat. <laughs> but yeah, it's so funny because I went down this morning, like Easter Sunday, and there, there were like the three eggs on the table. Like we all had our, our Easter eggs. Mine was the only egg that had not been opened before Easter Sunday. My mom and my brother both opened their eggs beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> they could not resist the chocolate. But you know what? It's not a problem. Like, we're, we're all grown-up adults. And that means we can eat our Easter eggs whenever we want. <laughs> it's actually something I, I really like to do after Easter. Because I find that some of the Easter eggs here, the, the small Cadbury's Easter eggs over here. No, not the small. I think it's the medium ones. The ones that open into two halves. Like, one of the eggs, like, if you buy a really small egg, it's all, like, a solid thing. And if you buy a really big egg, it's a solid thing. But if you buy a medium egg, it arrives in two halves. So you get the two halves of chocolate and it's like the perfect thickness. It's so nice. It's really good. So I usually wait until after Easter and then I buy them all on sale. <laughs> get all the chocolate. Also, Kurazu, hello. You have this on your wish list. Yeah, it's a detective game. It's a game about a detective reasoning. You've got to use the logic and use the clues you're given to figure out what's happened. And I'm really, really excited to play it. I've, I've got my magnifying glass ready. I'm going to be the best detective. I'm going to be detecting everything. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got uh, chocolate to power my brain up as well. Maybe I should have some of it now. Hold on. Yeah. I've got my egg in two halves. I'm just gonna have a little bit. Just a, a little nibble. Oh, it's really nice though, because it's, it's, it's a Cadbury's chocolate egg and I really like Cadbury's chocolate. Oh, that's nice. I, th I think I'm, I'm, I'm fueled up now. I'm definitely fueled up for detecting now. Detective Leary on the case. I'm experienced in my field. Look, I've done this before. I've done so much detecting recently, especially like considering the amount of discovering and piecing together I've been doing in Outer Wilds recently. This should be great. This should be really good. Wait, right, detective work with the letter D. Thank you for the dictionary narration redeem. Let me, I put my Easter egg on top of my, <laughs> I put my egg on top of my dictionary. Hold on. Hold on, I got it. I'm a smart person. Also, can I just say, I love the menu music in this game. If all the music is like this, I think we've got another banger soundtrack going on. Anyway, you know what? I usually pick a random word. I'm going to find the word detective and read that one. Or maybe like the words either side of detective. Okay, the words either side of detective are detect and detector, so... <laughs> Maybe not as interesting. But detective, noun, a person whose occupation is to investigate crimes. That's right, I'm not committing any crimes here. I'm the one investigating them. No crimes allowed in this stream. I'll, I'll detect them immediately. <laughs> All right, let me, do, let me do a random letter D word as well. Let's open it here. Okay. <laughs> And then for the for the random one, the random word I got, I got the word disciplinarian. Disciplinarian, a noun, a person who enforces firm discipline. So I guess that's also me today. I'm the the disciplinarian. 
If anyone tries committing crimes, they are going to be severely disciplined. That is not allowed here. We're trying to solve the crimes and find the culprits. Also, Grace, no, hello, welcome, welcome. Haven't heard of this game. Seems detective-y. That's exactly what it is. It is a it is a game about uh, it is a whodunit game. Like I'm pretty sure it's a murder mystery. I I'm fairly certain it's a murder mystery game. It'll be really funny if it's not now, and I, I got that completely wrong. <laughs> but I've purposely gone into it without knowing much about the plot. All I know is that the art is wild. The art for this game, like the promotional art, is incredibly interesting. And so I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. And Melamere as well, hello! Welcome, welcome! I'm going to do all the detecting. Wait, maybe I just forgot I did the crimes? No, I, I've not done any crimes. I, I can't forget any crimes I've committed because I just haven't done them. <laughs> but yeah, I, I had a very quick look and it's like very positive reviews, so... And mostly, instead of looking at the reviews, I tend to talk to people who've played it. And people who recommend it to me, I go, okay, what do you think of this game? And the amount of people who have said, yeah, it's really good, it kind of plays like Opera Din, that, that was all I really needed to be sold, honestly. That's, that's all that needed to be said, and I was like, right, I'm buying this game. <laughs> but yeah, it took me a while to actually get around to buying it, simply because I've been recommended so many incredible games that... I'm, I'm still now, I still have loads on the list. I've got loads of games on my to-play list that I haven't gotten around to yet. And so this one has finally gotten its time on the list. It's, it's finally gotten to the point where it's like, yes, let's play this one. At least until I go back to the Outer Wilds DLC. <laughs> but yeah, depending how good this is as well, I'll have to get the, the DLC to go with. Wait, do I have one? It's letting me mouse over one of the DLCs. Hold on, I need to check if I already have it. Hold on. I don't remember buying any. Uh, no, I don't have the DLC. I don't know why it lets me mouse over it. Maybe it then just goes, yeah, you can... You can buy this. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. It probably just... Yeah, it probably links me to the store. That makes sense. But it's just surprising that it only does it for the first one and not the second. Anyway, depending how it goes, I feel like I am going to like this game, so I feel like I am going to end up buying the DLC in the end. <laughs> but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to to get the brain cells out, do a bit of a bit of thinking after a weekend of not really thinking. Instead of thinking, I've been rapping bling bang bang born really badly. <laughs> Anyway, let's click new game. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, also, I'd like to say as a little warning to... Oh, I should actually probably make a make a content warning command for this. Because there is a little content warning thing on the Steam page that says it does have like freeze frames of pixelized crime scenes. So I'm, I'm gonna make a very quick little content warning command very very quickly but uh, I'm, I'm really excited to play this I'm, I'm, I've been looking forward to this this has been one that I, I've kept looking at and being right I'll play that next and then and then Talos 2 comes out and then Outer Wilds is bought for me and uh, it's finally time also Dima thank you for the head pad welcome in welcome welcome and oh that is absolutely fine Grace no I hope your work goes well Thank you for the, the work luck. I hope you have a, a very easy work day. Right, I'm just going to copy paste what the, the Steam, so uh, Steam store says under the mature content description. Let me see if that has worked. That has worked. Okay, I'm going to put that in the title so that people can be aware. There we go. You know what? Actually, I'm going to be cheeky. I'm going to put like the, the tip command in my title as well, just because just because I, I really want the Outer Worlds Collector's Edition. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna be cheeky today. I'm never cheeky. It's like the reason I've never done a subathon or anything. It's because I, I feel bad asking for things. But I'm 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 gonna be cheeky today. I'm gonna treat myself by asking very gently and then not pushing it any further. <laughs> I'm still not I'm still not really like any good at like shilling anything. I'm so bad at it. But thank you, thank you for posting the command. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly because I went to, to buy the collector's edition because I noticed as well that I could pre-order the, the gym button as well from Stanley Parable. So I was going to make an order for that and I put it all together and then the shipping cost was like $200 or something ridiculous. And I was like, that's more money than I thought it would be. I've got to wait till I can afford that. <laughs> but yeah, it's very unfortunate because the Outer Wilds Collector's Edition was available to pre-order from a European store as well, but apparently that sold out in a day. So the only option is the the US one, where the shipping cost is like $100 just for the one thing. So that was a bit of a surprise when I went to order it. I was like, I will treat myself today. I will not treat myself today, I'll treat myself later. <laughs> But yeah, I've, as, as soon as I saw the gym button, I was like, well, I need that. There's no possible way I can not have that. It is something that I must possess. But the collector's edition is more like, I, I don't technically need it. I just really want it. So yeah, I'm, I'm mostly just worried that the pre-orders are going to stop being sold. Like, there isn't a date for when pre-orders end. So I'm just hoping that it won't be before my next payday. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes either way. Anyway, let us continue to the case of the Golden Idol before any further ado. Let's click new game. Let's see what happens. Oh, here we go. Wait. How do you want to play? There's with highlights, select this if you don't like pixel hunting, or no highlights, select this if you don't mind finding all clickable spots on your own. Oh. Oh. Knowing knowing my observational skills, I'm thinking I might try with highlights. Right, with no highlights. I'm like, is there a way to do it where it's like no highlights but it shows that you can click it when you mouse over it? Like I'd be fine with something like that. It it would just be like if you mouse over and you don't know if you can click on it until you click. I don't know, let's try no highlights to begin with. And then, yeah, and then if I get stuck, I can go into the menu and change it. <laughs> it's good to know that it's changeable. That, yeah, let's, let's try no highlights. I can change it if needed. Prologue, an abrupt termination of contract. Ah. Ah, I see. Oh, it changes to a little magnifying glass. I think this should be okay. Right, uh, this this feels pretty um, easy to see what's going on here. Let's observe this body. Ah, there's a scalpel. There is a note. Ooh, it says January 5th, 1742. Both parties agree to these terms for the expedition to Monkey Paw Island. Oh, the monkey's paw girls. <laughs> Albert Cloudsley. Oh, wait, wait, can I like pick up? I can pick up words? Okay, Albert Cloudsley has rights to two-thirds of all all valuables for funding the expedition. Oberon Geller has rights to one-third of all valuables and any golden statues found for providing the map to the exploration site. Dr. Oberon Geller, Esquire Albert Cloudsley. Okay, so considering this guy is being shoved off the edge and he has a scalpel, I'm guessing he is Dr. Oberon Geller. And the one... Pushing, me, pushing him off the side is Esquire Albert Cloudsley. Maybe want some statues? Who knows? Oh, here's the map. Okay. All right, we're just going straight in then. I guess this is like a, a tutorial to show you how to play. All right, Horn of... Horn of Finger. Ruins of Xenopolis. 
Horn of Thumb. Bay of Shadows. I'm picking up so many words here. Oh, this is really cool. I'm just going to pick up as many words as I can and then, I guess, change to thinking? A medicine bottle. Yeah, this this is definitely the doctor. This, <laughs> It's like, okay, yeah, this guy has a scalpel and a medicine bottle. Who is this one? And then over here, I knew what you were plotting, you snake. Ooh. So you've got a pipe, you've got a dagger, and you have the, the same contract as well. Ooh. Very interesting. Okay. What's in the bags? Okay, this bag has two bags filled with coins and gems, uh, a tobacco pouch and a, a, t a tobacco tobacco pouch. I know how to speak, I promise. <laughs> and a pipe cleaner. And then this one has a bag of medical instruments and some medicine. Uh, a golden statue with a red stone and a bag filled with coins and gems. Okay, so that's the two thirds and the one third and the golden statue. So it seems like everything was split up evenly. No fights there. Wonder what else could have happened, I guess. Let's go to thinking. Okay, oh, here we go, yes. Okay, so the one falling is Oberon Geller. And then this one pushing him off is Albert Cloudsley. We can deduce that. Oh, when a scroll is completely filled in, words can be dragged directly from the slots. <gasps> I see. Okay, so we now know that Albert Cloudsley pushed Oberon Geller from a cliff in the... I guess we're in the ruins of Xenopolis because that's where it is on here. That's the part that's marked off, so I'm going to put this down here. Okay, yep. Yeah. Oh, two or fewer slots are incorrect. Okay, so that's not where we're camping. Where are we camping then? Let's try to figure that out. Uh, let's go back. Right, there's this little... I guess we can figure it out from the map. I guess we're on the Horn of Thumb. Yeah, we're on the Horn of Thumb, because it's this little bit sticking out and the two islands in the back. Okay, so we we set up camp at the Horn of Thumb. And now we can fill this in. Okay, this is a really good tutorial. This is such a good tutorial to figure out how everything works. Also, I think I'm going to be okay without the highlights. Like, the fact that it the cursor changes when you mouse over things. I think I don't need the highlights. I think I can just wiggle around and find it. I like this. The scroll has been fulfilled. No hints accessed. I'm 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 gonna be trying no hint run. I I anyone who knows me knows how stubborn I am with games like this. I will bash my head against the wall until I figure it out. I I don't like using hints. <laughs> but uh hopefully hopefully it'll be straightforward enough to figure out. I'm I, I feel like I'm gonna have fun with this already. <laughs> While Dr. Oberon Geller was surveying the poor weather with his looking glass, his expedition partner, Albert Cloudsley, Esquire, suddenly pushed him off the cliff. Alright, so... I don't feel like there's a point to staying and exploring. I think I've found everything, so let's return to scenario selection. Here we go, chapter one. Complications in the family. Am I done with that now, then? Yes. Yes, okay. I'm done with that. Let's move on to number two. Oh no, this is still chapter one. It's chapter one, part two. Okay, there's parts to it. I was going to say, if that's a whole chapter, that was very short. It's not. Okay. Uh, chapter one, part two. We've got complications in the family. Let's see what's going on here. The untimely passing of a rural gentleman. Oh, okay. Okay, what could have happened here? There's a horse. <gasps> a horse is running in the yard. I got the horse. Right, here we go. Yeah, but I, I think, I think this person might possibly be dead. Let's have a look to make sure. Ooh. What is that? A ring with a ruby. Ooh. 
Ooh, I'm instantly wondering now, because it said there was a red gem in the first statue. Right, here we go. The man is not breathing. His head is badly wounded. So we got wound and head and horse. Can we say the horse did it? <laughs> yeah, blood already in the, the second part. Like, it's 4 a.m. here, the music isn't helping. Oh no, if you want a, a relaxing stream to to sleep, then this might not be the the best choice overall. But uh I don't know. You've got my my comforting voice. I'm here where like the, the most gory, horrible murder scene can happen, and I just sit here like, oh dear, I, I think he might be dead. <laughs> I'm I'm here to to relax the mood slightly. Right, it seems like there's a lot to look around at in this room though, so I'm just gonna get started. Let's get started with this book that is very precariously dangling out the bookshelf. Oh, Henry Clover lead poisoning. Okay, why has someone hastily put back a book about lead poisoning? I wonder. Okay, now that's all just the body. Uh, we've got the tall rickety ladder. What have we got here? Oh, a calendar. It is August 23rd, apparently. And we've got a map. Okay, we've got Woodshire, we've got Crow Tower, and we've got Blackfield. Right. Considering there's a boat out there, I think we're probably at Blackfield. Because there's water. And these other two don't seem to have water outside. So I think this is Blackfield. We're going to be in this this place right here. Let's see what the desk is about. Spontaneous combustion? Hello, let me let me pick those words up. Surely the book will lead nowhere. Yeah, I'm sure it's completely irrelevant. Hi, Narama, lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. Although, I don't know. I feel like this is the kind of game which probably would give you a few red herrings. Like, I don't think they want to make it too easy for you. There will be a few things they throw out that aren't relevant. To, to make you really think about it, to figure out what it actually is. <laughs> Spontaneous combustion has the same vibe as funny violence. It does. It does. I, I feel like I use spontaneous combustion as a, as a joke so much when I really shouldn't. Right, I, Sebastian Cloudsley, will share my humble contribution to the science of anatomy and chemistry. Okay, oh, we got a book here. Oh, this is from... Wait, it's August 23rd? Yeah, this is from yesterday. Yesterday's diary entry. Let's have a look. Uh, 12 o'clock, woke up. A beautiful day. Uh, 12.30, washed and dressed in my dining attire. Okay, I can pick up the word dining. Four o'clock, had a beautiful roast duck for lunch. Sixteen, changed to my hunting attire. Seventeen o'clock, rode to hunt badgers. Had no luck today and returned home. Eighteen, changed to my researching attire. Nineteen, changed to my dining attire. Oh, we've already got dining. Uh, Twenty, had a tasty beef loin for supper. And then twenty-two thirty, filled in my diary and went to bed to continue reading for my research. Oh, so I guess he was reading the book about lead poisoning before he went to bed? Maybe, and he just shoved it back in the, the shelf before he went to sleep? Possibly. Anyway, this is interesting. I don't want to click on thinking until I've got as many clues as I can, I think. I think it's more funny that way, because if I go on to thinking, it gives me an idea of what I'm looking for. I want to make it harder for myself. Oh, look at that! This clue has been added to the thinking panel. What a nice portrait! I think if I got my portrait done like that, I think I would also want it done eating chicken and drinking wine. <laughs> that is the life. Yeah, a yacht is slowly floating in the river. That, yeah, we're definitely next to this river. This is Blackfield. Okay, ooh! Oh, this... This looks like it could be the, the researching attire. And if that's the case, it's looking a little bit worse for wear. Because the outfit he's wearing at the moment, that doesn't look like hunting attire to me. That seems more like the, the dining attire. No, it, it looks different to the picture. Maybe that is the hunting attire. Hmm. Many questions. Right, and oh, hey, look! 
golden statue. With a little red ju with a little red gem, a little red ruby. I was trying to say ruby and gem at the same time, and I was gonna say juby. That is that's not a gem. Why is that there's blood like all the way over here? Was this the murder weapon? Was was he clonked over the head with this? And then staggered back to bed, maybe? Well, he was clearly hit in the head by something, but the fact that there's this trail of blood. I think he was hit over here. Let's go let's go to thinking now. Let's have a look. Right, okay, so that's the dining attire. That's the researching attire. And then this looks like the hunting attire. There we go, yes. Everything is filled in correctly. Excellent, okay. And so we know that this is Sebastian Cloudsley. Here we go then. Uh, Sebastian Cloudsley, Lord of Blackfield, which we figured out from the river, passed away in his bed. The cause of death was a head wound, which occurred Did he literally just fall from his horse while he was out hunting? That's that's so sad. <laughs> what a shame. Yeah, I guess he just fell off his horse. <laughs> he he fell from his horse, hit his head, staggered all the way back to bed, and just passed away. Okay, we've got no murders yet, but we're figuring out what's happened here. Maybe instead of murders, it's a curse. The curse of the 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 golden the golden statue making everyone die horrible unfortunate deaths uh -huh. the scroll has been fulfilled while the lord of blackfield was hunting his horse threw him off and he suffered a deadly wound to the head all right next one well, hello why is there like a creepy cult going on here hi hello okay i guess this is this funeral Okay. Nice, there's nothing else extra to click on the other one. No, okay, just that one. Wait, do we have actual spontaneous combustion now? I think we might actually have spontaneous combustion now. <gasps> Chapter one, complications in the family. The, dr the dramatic departure of an outsider. Is this spontaneous combustion? Oh, please. I mean, that, that would be terrible. Please don't let it be. Uh. <laughs> Hold on, I need to sit up straight. I've started slouching. And have a sip of my monster too. Gotta replenish the brain cells after using them all to figure out he fell off his horse. <laughs> uh, yep, that is somebody on fire with a scorched horse brush and a scorched knife. Okay, so I'm guessing this is uh, someone who looks after the horses, like a... Oh, what's the word? Uh, the... Like a, like a spe special assistant that... I don't know the word I'm thinking of. Something like that. Put him out with my monster! <laughs> Wait, I... Hold on. Yeah, I don't think monster would be farmable. I think that would put a fire out. Okay, let me... Put the fire up. I think that's a bit too much fire for a single can of monster. Stable hand! Stable hand, that's the word! Thank you, Nermits! Hi! Welcome, welcome. That's exactly the word I was thinking of, and my, my brain just went black. <laughs> welcome, welcome, and thank you for the hydrate too, Jack, and for the posture check. Melimere. I have a sip of my monster, and I'm gonna have a very big stretch. Yeah. As big a stretch as a tiny bean like me can stretch up to. <laughs> All right, here is somebody screaming. Spare me, devil! I was simply following orders! What? All right, well, you've also got a knife. What's in here, then? Astonishing Monkey Man, property of Pear Brothers. Who are the Pear Brothers? Okay. Right. What have you got? What the blazes? <laughs> Literally. 
what the blaze is. Oh, okay. August Jockey Club Derby. Uh, race three, win Raging Sultan. Wager £35. Uh, considering the time, that's a very big wager. Oh, was someone trying to, to rig the horse races? Like, they've clearly put a bet on here for Raging Sultan to win. Were you trying to... Trying to mess around with the horses and make sure you win? Were you trying to rig the horse races, maybe? Now, if it's all the same to you, I will take my leave. Wait, this is a statue too, but it's... It's blue this time, it's not red. And it has symbols on the back. Interesting. I wonder if I'm gonna have to remember this. I think I wanna write this down. <laughs> Just in case. Where's my pen? I lost my pen. Uh. Don't worry, that was an empty pen. Right, does this pen work? My notebook is also under my Easter egg. Okay, this pen works. I'm gonna write these symbols down just in case. Like, I feel like this is the kind of game that keeps like all of the hints you need and shows them to you when you need them. But just in case, I like I like writing things down. Also, that pen barely worked. <laughs> if I need to write anything else down, I'm going to have to find something else. Wait, ring, this is the same ring that uh that the guy had before, the the guy who just died, uh, Sebastian who fell off his horse. That looks like the same ring. What does the note say? Spontaneous combustion! Hey! To, per to perform the combustion trick, you must first cast a freezing spell. The sacred glyphs for combustion on the idol are... Oh, that's a different symbol to the one in the middle. Oh no, no, that's... No, that, those are the same symbols. Those are the exact same symbols. That's good. Yeah, screenshotting hints in a mystery game is most convenient, but true immersion is pulling out a notebook and jotting it down in real life. I love making notes. I have so many notebooks that are full of notes I've made from video games. I just, I feel like there's something so fun about just writing everything down and then looking back on it afterwards like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, I wrote this down, yes. I do need to find another pen though. This pen is barely working. I usually have so many pens. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm using a Sharpie. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to write things down really big with a Sharpie. There we go. I've got my notebook and pen ready. Anyway, yep. Those are the, the glyphs for combustion. They sure have been filled out on the idol there. And what's that? Uh, one pound, two shillings, and two pence. Okay. Who are you, then? You just... You just made this person spontaneously combust, and now you're just leaving? Definitely not suspicious. <laughs> what font size do I write in? Um, at the moment, it's probably, like, font size... 36. <laughs> I usually write it at a 12 or 14. With my Sharpie, it's a 36. <laughs> Look, it's a really thick Sharpie. It's it's a Sharpie I've had for a while, so the, the nib has kind of worn down a bit. So it's it's even thicker than it usually is. So every time I write with it, it's... It's a good job I've got a notebook with quite big pages. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah, large characters. Right, who are you? You're just, like, standing here. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Ash Blair, finest tobacco. Okay, and we've got a note. Uh, prepare the carriage for tomorrow. We are to visit my nephew. EC. A saddlebag. That saddlebag also has EC on it, so I guess you're EC? Two shillings and a penny. And a dagger. Everyone's, everyone seems to have blades on them. Right, and who are you? I saw you at the funeral, I think. What an unexpected turn of events. Right, you have an embroidered handkerchief that also has EC on it. There's a lot of ECs around here. 
Uh, dear Edmund, we've got a name. Dear Edmund, it has reached my attention that you are seeking a capable new servant. I have just the man for you. David Gorin is an experienced coachman with a diverse set of talents that I am sure you will find very useful. If you are displeased with his services, do not hesitate to let me know. Yours, Theo. Okay, so we've got David Gorin now, who's a coachman. And I'm guessing this is Edmund. Like, he received this from Theo? So this could be Edmund? Maybe. We'll find out more as we go along, I'm sure. A stiletto blade. Ooh, fancy. And you have got three pounds and three shillings, so you're, you're a little richer. I guess we can kind of guess how much money they all have from what they're carrying around. Like, this guy only has two shillings and a penny. He's probably not nobility. I feel like it's safe to say this is probably the the uh, the coach driver. The one who was recommended. This is probably David Gorin. And then I think we can guess this is Edmund, maybe, because of the, the handkerchief. And then the reason why he'd have this would be because he's preparing the stagecoach, so he's looking after the belongings. Right, there's a note here as well. Oh, stable rotor for Adam and James. So these are the stable hands. The stable hands are Adam and James. Okay, so Monday, Monday through Wednesday, we've got James doing the grooming and Adam doing the stable cleaning. And then Thursday through Saturday, we've got Adam doing the grooming and James doing the cleaning. And do it properly, you lazy oafs. So depending which day of the week this is, we can tell who this is because there's a, they're, they're holding onto a, a grooming brush. So they're on the rotor for grooming today. The question is, what day is it? <laughs> what have we got here? That doesn't say, oh wait, newspaper. We've got the London Gazette year. Wait, September 7th, that's my birthday. <laughs> wait, why is the spontaneous combustion case happening on my birthday? I'm, I'm feeling so called out by this. What, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck, this is, Anyway, we've got a Monday, so it's Monday. It's Monday today, and we've got Edmund Cloudsley. So we've got the surname now, we've got Lord Edmund Cloudsley. I think that's this guy. I think he's Edmund Cloudsley. So if he he's Edmund Cloudsley, he is David Gorin. This, this person just rolled up and made this person spontaneously combust. Uh, we know that it's a Monday, so that means grooming on a Monday is James. So this is James. James has just spontaneously combusted. And then I'm guessing this is probably... Maybe Adam? Doing the cleaning? Because it looks like he's running from the same direction. Hmm. I'm not sure if there's more to... Oh! <gasps> Wait, look at that! That's so cute! It's like a little dragon. Look at that. Wait, I can go in here? Ooh. We can go inside. Oh, yes. <laughs> Happened on my birthday because they served and then died. <laughs> then I got reincarnated. <laughs> Is this why fire follows me around? Is this the reason behind it? <laughs> oh, we got more people in here. Hello. My apologies. He could be so bad here sometimes. Okay, we've got Shamal Bhatt, uh, Simhasana Batisi. Uh, you've got four pounds, you're quite rich. Uh, she's also got loads of rings with loads of gemstones. And a fan, and an ornamental, an ornamented katar blade. So how about you then, uh? I would not have expected one of your family to treat a legal document in such a way. I am appalled. Okay, you've also got a ring. I wonder if this is just the, like, a family ring, then. Like, because I'm pretty sure there's a thing with noble families, especially in this day and age, to have, like, a family ring so that everyone can, like, you can put your hand out and be like, Ah, oh, you're a member of the Cloudsley family, I see. Right, and you've got two shillings, three pence, and... Ooh! Reading of the last will and testament of Sebastian Cloudsley. Yep, he's the one who fell off his horse. 
Okay, so we've got Albert Cloudsley and Mary Cloudsley. Up here are the the parents of Sebastian Cloudsley, who fell off his horse tragically and passed away. Then we've got uh, Beatrix Batley. Oh, who married Sebastian? Sebastian's wife? Oh, and then we've got Edmund Cloudsley, who's the oldest son who married Rose Cubert. Okay. Okay, so there was the two sons, and then they both married. And then these two had a son called Peter Batley. And there is also Willard Wright, who is an associate, question mark? So the four inheritors are all present. Wait, I wonder... Hmm. I wonder why his wife didn't inherit anything, then. I guess maybe it went all directly to the child, because, I mean, depending on the age of the child, she could still be, could this could be like a two-year-old toddler or something. Hmm. Very interesting, though. Right, so who are you, then? Uh, okay, we've got Nicholas Maker, the attorney here. Okay, so you're the attorney. So I'm guessing you're probably uh, Edmund's wife? You Edmund's wife? Or are you Beatrix Batley? Or maybe Mary Clowsley. Maybe someone completely unrelated. I don't know who you are yet. But I'm sure we'll figure it out. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Okay, so Batley is, like, this is like the, the emblem, I guess, like the, the family seal. What's the word? Crest, crest, the family crest. So the little dragon thing is Batley, the, is the, the um, devil goat with swords behind it is Cloudsley. And then Cubert is just like a nice palm tree in the sun. Right, so we're in the Batley place. So that means... Yeah, this is going to be Beatrix Batley then. So this is Sebastian's wife. Okay. Interesting. Oh! Aphorisms by Sebastian Cloudsley. How to be happy. Why can I just take the word happy? <laughs> At least Cubert is normal. I, I don't know. I think the dragon one's normal too. That, that just looks like a regular dragon to me. Very, very high quality. Uh, the one that's more like a like a devil goat face is slightly more worrying. But uh, I, I don't know. I've I've seen weirder family crests before. I've seen some strange ones. <laughs> How to be happy? Eat a hearty meal every day and do not waste your time on trivialities. How to avoid being upset. Strive for that which holds nothing, uh, which holds meaning, not nothing, meaning. Strive for that which holds meaning and do not shirk from, oh, shrink from responsibility. I just can't read today, can I? Wow. How to be inspired. Take a walk in your forest and breathe the fresh air. How to avoid being scared. Feeling scared is a weakness. Be strong instead. You're so right. I will simply stop being scared now. If anything scares me, I will choose to not be. <laughs> that feels like the same level of just like, if you're depressed, uh, just feel happy instead. <laughs> just stop feeling sad. It's that easy. Ooh, there's something going on in the fireplace, though. Ooh. I think this is going to be a puzzle. Please let this be a puzzle. Yes. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. Okay, we've got scraps. We've got scraps. Ooh! I, Sebastian Cloudsley of Blackfield County, being in bodily health and of sound and disposing mind and memory, nominate and appoint Nicholas Maker as executor of my last will and testament. Dear brother Edmund, I'm guessing he might not have written, he may have written something that's not so nice to dear brother Edmund, from what we're hearing with the whole like, uh, I would expect someone of, this house to behave in a better manner. <laughs> Loads of little bits, though. Alright, we met so rarely after you left, therefore I bequeath to you 
the Blackfield Man Manor House's uh, museum uh, for colonies, my savings, land and house, come home and it's uh, my life and accomplishments. Yeah, we've got loads of little bits here. I want to piece them all together. If I look at all of these and go to the thinking panel, I is it going to let me put them together? I don't know. Let's finish looking at these first. Oh, hey! Another bet on the, the club derby. This was a bet for spinning Jenny to win, but the wager was 50 pounds. That's... That's a... That's a big wager. Ooh. Oh! Dear Peter Batley, we have sent you frequent reminders concerning the settlements of your debt, and yet, to date, the debt remains unpaid. We humbly request that you make your payments as soon as possible, or we will be forced to take the matter into our own hands. The debt currently stands at £255. Blackguard and Buck loans. I wonder if Peter Badley has been trying to make really high bets on the horses to try and pay this back, and it's just been going worse. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> right, let's go into the thinking panel. Oh, it, it puts them together in the thinking panel. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. We can look at those. Look at those closer in a little bit. After doing a tiny bit more looking around. Because I want to know what this is as well. Yeah, 225 pounds in this time. Like, if we look at the newspaper here, this is 1786. So that is... Hold on, I want to look it up, actually. £225 in 1786 in modern money. Okay, I found a website. Uh, £225 in 1786 would be the equivalent of over £44,000 nowadays. That's... That's a lot of money. 44 grand is... That's a lot of money. That is nothing to be sniffed at. That is that is much money. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. Yeah, okay, and what's, what's 35? Okay, so 35 would be almost 7,000 pounds. And 60 pounds, which was the wager that was like in the fireplace, that's worth almost 12,000 pounds as a wager. That is wild. That is so wild. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Yeah, no, 44,000 is how much he owed. That's how much he's in debt. Uh, he bet about 12,000 on the horses. Oh no, unless it's. If this guy's the guy in debt, he bet like. 7,000 for this one horse to win. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel I feel like this guy is most likely Peter Batley from what we've learned at the moment. But I want to know, is there anywhere else I can go? I don't think there is. But yeah, from what we've learned, I think this is Peter Batley. This is Edmund Cloudsley. This is David Gorin, who's the stage stagehand... Uh, coach driver this is was this james yeah this is james this is adam and then in here we have uh what was your name again nicholas maker the attorney and then i'm still not entirely sure who she is but something oh hey look at this oh the pair twins okay so adam and james are the pair twins Fat Lord, that's that's so nice. It's a lovely drawing they've done there. Right, I think we've picked up most of the stuff we can around here. Let's let's start thinking. Let's start thinking. Let's start putting the names to these. We know these are all these two are pairs now. We know this is James pair. And so then this is gonna be Adam pair. Uh do do do. This is gonna be Edmund Cloudsley. Uh, where's the attorney? This is Nicholas Maker. Uh, I think he's the stagecoach. I think this is David Gorin. 
And then I think this is probably Peter Batley. Yeah, I think that's Peter Batley. And I think he is very severely in debt. So then, hmm. Right, let's, oh, wait, let's, oh, oh, oh. Wait, looking at these, this, this is going to be helpful. Okay, uh, we left so rarely after you left the colonies. Therefore, I bequeath to you my savings, land, and the Blackfield Manor House. Come home and establish a museum of my life and accomplishments. And here, uh, I want you to put your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. Therefore, I bequeath to you the notes from the research I have undertaken on astronomy. I grant you leave to finish and publish it under both our names. Down here, my late sister. Your mother disclosed your financial troubles to me long ago, and I resolved to help you. I bequeath to you a compilation of my aphorisms to provide the direction in your life which you so clearly lack. Wow! And then here, I bequeath to you the golden idol of Xenopolis. You know what to do with it. Okay, so... Spontaneous combustion... was the, the golden idol of Xenopolis. Right, let's have a look at this well again. Here we go. Okay, so Peter Batley is the son who is very severely in debt. And then we've got Rose Cubert, the, who, who will be the sister I bequeath to you my, uh, my book on how to be happy. <laughs> Edmund Cloudsley, uh... I wonder if he's into politics. Hold on. Are you into politics? Yes, Lord Edmund Cloudsley's speech stirs Parliament. He is into politics. So he is going to be the one here. This is why he got so mad. Uh, because the, the will was being read out. And when it got to Edmund, all he got in the will was his notes from research on astronomy and that's it that's all he got from the will it was i'm giving you my notes and you gotta publish it <laughs> so that's gonna be why he was so mad so we know that's that was addressed to edmund cloudsley this one uh we so rarely we met so rarely after you left the colonies uh i'm guessing that's gonna be the sun then that's gonna be peter batley just like, uh, I establish a museum of my life and accomplishments. That's gonna be the sun, I think. Just like, I, I bequeath to you, uh, come home, take everything from the family, and stay here and make a museum. <laughs> yeah, some people are over that in debt. Yeah, honestly, I feel like debt is such an awful situation because once you start getting into debt, it gets so much harder to pay it off because if you end up having to take out a loan, you then have to pay back the interest on that loan as well. And if you're if you're getting into debt in the first place, you probably can't afford the interest on the 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 loan as well. So then people end up taking out more loans and then there's more interest and then it it just keeps getting higher and higher. It's it's a horrible horrible situation. Uh I remember a time uh it was it was a fair while ago now. I've gotten so much better with money now. But uh, there was a time when I got so severely into my overdraft. Like, a part of me was like, well, I've got my overdraft for my account. I don't have to worry about it. But the interest kept stacking up. And it got to the point where I was, I was having to be so careful with money just to pay back my overdraft and still have enough to live on. And honestly, it was a really good learning experience. I was very lucky it wasn't a huge amount. Because if it had been a bigger amount, I would have been in a lot of trouble. But as it was, it was just like a doable amount. And I very thankfully got help from family and friends as well, which was which was an absolute like I I would have been in so much trouble otherwise. But my mum helped me out to to like keep me over the overdraft level and then I paid her back instead. Because then I didn't have to worry about the interest. So I was I was really lucky, but a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people aren't that fortunate. And honestly, so many so many loans are so predatory as well. Yeah. High interest rates should be abolished. Yeah, I think the worst is like the I I don't know if 
it's the same in other places, but over here especially, there's a lot of uh, payday loans. And it's basically set up as like short term, high interest, but it's meant to be to just tide you over until payday. But it's really not worth it because the amount you're paying with interest is, it makes the next period of time, you, you don't have enough money to get through. It's, it's awful. It's, it's really bad. Yeah, same. Oh, same with you and a credit card. Yeah, credit cards are, they can be so useful, but I think the problem a lot of people have with credit cards is it's easy to not see it as money. Like, you just have this card and you just buy things with it, and it's really easy to lose track of it if you're not careful. Which is why uh, I, I always, I've always had a debit card. I, I always make sure I have a debit card. <laughs> I wouldn't trust myself with a credit card. I feel like I'd just be like, oh, just a little bit, just a little bit over, it'll be fine. And then I would forget about it. So yeah, I always have a debit card, so I can't spend money I don't have. And if I do, my bank informs me that I've dipped into my overdraft and I very quickly fix that. <laughs> but yeah, but it's honestly, a lot of it is just down to, down to capitalism, really. Like, costs are going up, but wages also aren't going up but uh, that's getting really deep now and i don't want to get super deep so we're gonna go back to murder mysteries now and stop talking about money because <laughs> money is evil also nova lights as well hello thank you for the head pat right right as i started ranting about money and loans <laughs> welcome in welcome in right my late sister yeah this is definitely rose cubert then because all four of the the, the inheritance of the will were there, so... Rose Cubert is going to be here. Your mother disclosed your financial troubles to me long ago, and I resolved to help you with... by telling you off. That's... that's so funny. <laughs> money evil, don't bet £44,000 on horses. That's a really, really good life lesson to take from this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Everyone always says money can't buy happiness, but it's it sure helps sometimes. Like, <laughs> like no, I do agree that uh, you can be if if you are like the, there are fundamentally things depressing you in your life, then just having money won't immediately fix that. But also, a lack of money sure doesn't help either. Like, it it sure can help sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, I love here how he's just like, hey, I heard you're in financial trouble. I'm going to give you a book telling you to be happy. That's so... Th Sebastian's an asshole. Wow. <laughs> this guy's awful. This guy's terrible. He's like, my dear brother, I don't leave you anything because you went into politics. My dear sister, I don't give you anything because you, you're in debt. My dear son... Uh, I'm giving you all of my inheritance, but you've got to come home and make the house into a museum on my life. Like, th this guy. This guy. Honestly, what a terrible will. He literally just made this will to insult everyone on it, except for this one mysterious guy, this Willard Wright, who's clearly this, this guy with the idol who he gave the golden idol to and then just said, you know what to do with it. Which I guess is making, uh, make, making a poor stable hand spontaneously combust. Like what? <laughs> All right, well that one's addressed to Willard Wright and this one is addressed to Rose Cubert. Oh no, it's not, okay. Hmm. Hold on, let me go back. Right, because these are all filled in properly. Right, let me go back. Yeah, because Willard Wright, Peter Batley, Rose Cubert, and Edmund Cloudsley. Those are the inheritors. So it's these four. So Rose Cubert. Oh no, Rose Cubert, because she married. She married into the, the Batleys. She must have married into the Batley family. Is that what it is? Is it addressed to Rose Batley? 
No, that's incorrectly filled in. Hmm. Hold on, I might be looking at this wrong. Uh, Beatrix Batley, Peter Batley. So, oh, maybe that's not... Not his son. Hmm. Hmm. Let me, let me think this through again. Yeah, my late sister. Late sister with financial troubles. Oh, hold on. Is Beatrix Batley the late sister? I think Beatrix Batley is the late sister who had money troubles. And so when she died... Oh yeah, wait, the... I, yeah, I guess the crosses next to them mean that they're dead. That, that, that's why Beatrix Badley is not part of the inheritance. <laughs> it's because she's dead. So she's clearly passed all her debts on to poor Peter Badley, who is the one who is severely in debt. So... That one is going to be the one addressed to Peter Batley. And then Rose Cubert is going to be the one who left the colonies because that makes sense. She's got all the, all of the things that she's holding on to, like the, like the Shamal Bat, Sim Hassana, Batisi, the fan, the, the ornamental guitar blade. That's, yeah, she's the one who's been away for, for colonies. That, okay, I got it now. I got it now. So yeah, she's the one who's got the savings land, the manor house. And he's just like, okay, yeah, you know how you really enjoy traveling and exploring? Uh, I'm giving you all of this, so you have to stay home and make a museum dedicated to me. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be what it is. There we go. So th this is, uh... oh, it's cause there's a dash there. I didn't notice the dash. I think if I'd noticed that there was a dash there, if I'd looked a bit more carefully, I would have noticed seeing my late sister, your mother, disclosed your financial troubles. Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense then. Okay, so basically, he's, he's still really awful. He's just like, hey, I heard that your mother, uh, your mother told me you're in loads of debt. Um, I've given you a book on how to be happy, how to not be sad, how to discipline yourself. Oh, uh, you did the same thing in the demo. Oh, I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> right, well, we've got all this filled out then. So here we go. I love... Uh... Okay, well, let's start from the end. We'll start with, suddenly, James Pear died from spontaneous combustion. We can start with that part. And ordered... Mmm. Okay. So someone was upset. I think we start with Edmund. I'm gonna start putting things in. If it's wrong, I can just take them out. Oh, the first four levels of the demo. Oh, that's a really nice demo. That's nice that it gives that much in the demo. I like games with meaty demos. It feels good. Right, Edmund Cloudsley was upset to receive research in Sebastian Cloudsley's will and ordered ooh maybe ordered these two to take the idol from Willard Wright like he was he was mad about not getting anything useful in the will he he clearly went he was clearly very angry because he tore it up and threw it in the fire and then i think he probably ordered Peter Batley and someone else? Yeah, Peter Batley is out there. Peter Batley and David Gorin, maybe? Hmm. It's like, who would he have ordered to take the idol? Oh, maybe he ordered the two... The two stagehands. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try Adam Pear and James Pear. If he ordered them both to take the idol, no, it's not those two. Then I'm gonna make a guess of he ordered Peter Batley and Rose Cubert to take the idol from William Wright. No, I don't think that's right. Right, what are you saying? What an unexpected turn of events. 
Uh, okay, saying here, prepare the carriage for tomorrow. We're to visit my nephew. Uh, Pear didn't set himself on fire, right? No, th uh, this guy here set him on fire. This guy used the idol to make him spontaneously combust. <laughs> but uh, Edmund was clearly upset to just receive research in the will. So I think he then ordered people to take the idol from Willard Wright. Because I don't think anything else... Like, we, he wouldn't have ordered someone to take the house. He wouldn't have ordered anyone to take the aphorisms because they were just thrown on the floor. So it's got to be the idol... He ordered people to take the idol, and so that's going to have to be Willard Wright because he's the one who has the idol. It's just, who would he have ordered to take it? Huh. Let's go talk to everyone again. Here, what, the blazers? Yeah, he's just got his... He, he just made the bet on the horses. That's all he has. He doesn't have money. Hmm. I don't think he would have ordered... Him? Would he? Would he have ordered David Gorham? No, because I think I tried that. No. Alright, let's go back in here. Let's go have a look. Because here, I wouldn't... I would not have expected one of your family to treat a legal document in such a way. Yeah, that was, uh... That would be Edmund... Oh, wait, maybe... No, maybe it was... Oh... I'm thinking about this the wrong way round. Edward... Edmund seems a bit more, like, calm and reserved. I think it's Peter. I think it's Peter who got mad. Peter was... He was upset to receive... aphorisms... in the will. I think that seems more likely. <laughs> Yeah, it seems more likely that he's the one who was mad because he's severely in debt. He was clearly expecting to get money from the will. And upon realizing he's probably put in a huge bet on the horses and is getting further into debt, he I feel like he'd be the, the type. He looks pretty mad. Like, he looks mad now. I think he's the one who did it. So he... And it looks like there's a sword on the ground here as well. I feel like that's probably his and he dropped it when everything started happening. So I think he probably ordered these two to take the idol. Edmund Cloudsley and I'm gonna try and David Goran. It might be Andrew's Cuba. Yeah, I think he would have ordered the other two in the room to take the idol. No, oh no, I think, no, yes. He'd be the one to order these two to do it. He'd order the two stagehands to take the idol, and then one of them is set on fire. Ah. Yes! It makes perfect sense. He wouldn't be able to boss around any of the others. Like, the stagehands are the, are the only ones who he would actually have leverage over, because, <laughs> because he's severely in debt and nobody else would probably listen to him. Oh, this is great. The scroll has been fulfilled. Oh, oh, thank you for the, the dictionary narration redeem as well. Let me let me do that before I read this out. Wait, where did I put the dictionary? Oh. I put it on the floor because my Easter egg's in the way. Let's have a look. Let's check in the dictionary if I've been pronouncing it properly. I probably haven't. Da, da, da. I can't spell. Yeah, aphorism. I was saying aphorism, wasn't I? I think I've, I've been pronouncing it right. If not, I am now. <laughs> aphorism, a noun. A short, clever phrase which makes a true point. As an adjective, it is aphoristic. So if you make an aphoristic point, it is just a short, clever phrase which is true. <laughs> Good to know, now you know. Educational streams. Hee <laughs> hee. Right, Peter Batley, encumbered by his gambling debts, had placed high hopes on his uncle's testament. Upon discovering he had inherited nothing but a book of aphorisms, he tore up the will and ordered his servants to take the golden statue from the stranger Willard. Suddenly, one of the servants burst into flames. 
And we know now that uh, Willard Wright is the one who um, made that happen with the idol. Oh, that's so cool. This is so cool. All right, next chapter. All right, we're moving on to four. <laughs> I love this so far. I'm loving this. All right, we didn't get a terrifying cultist appear <laughs> this time. All right, uh, chapter two, The Cursed Inheritance, The Murder at the Little Mermaid. <coughs> Let's see what we've got here. Also, Kochan9, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. Welcome in. We're solving some mysterious deaths. Chapter two, The Cursed Inheritance, The Murder at the Little Mermaid. Okay, yeah, this one is clearly a murder. It's like, the first two? Like, the first one was murder. The second one was accidental death. The third one we know was murder, but it didn't look like it. This one, uh, that is... That's a very, a very murder person. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, goodness. But, uh, welcome in, welcome, welcome. Doing a bit of deductive reasoning at the moment figuring out what happened here. I guess we better start with the body. Let's have a look. Right, the man is not breathing. Uh, he has a walking cane and a ring with a ruby. We're seeing a lot of these ruby rings around. Who is this? All right, we've got a washing bowl filled with slightly bloody water. So someone tried to clean up here. Uh, dear Proud Beast Master, I have attended our departed brother's send-off and accepted the keepsake that he bestowed upon our brotherhood in his will. I shall send this letter tomorrow, September 10th. I hope it will reach you without delay. Already it is midnight. I will retire to my bed, for this has been a long day. May Griffin awaken, Proud Beast initiate. I was joking about cult robes. This is a cult. This is a cult. <laughs> so then, I guess... Yeah, so I guess Proud Beast Initiate is probably the the guy we just saw, the Willard uh, something. I've forgotten his name already. WW, that guy. The guy who made the, the stagehand spontaneously combust. That guy. <laughs> so then if that's him here, he never got time to write this message. Or send it off at least. He wrote it. But it seems he... Uh, didn't get the chance to head back. Oh, and this is empty. Why is it playing like the very end of London Bridge is falling down when you open it? It's like the, my dear lady. Yeah, that's the end of London Bridge. That, just when you open it. Mysterious. I wonder if that was set up so that so that he'd know if anyone tried to open it, because it would make a sound. Oh, and there's a stopwatch here. The watch is ticking. To my dear Morris. We've got Morris as a name then. Okay. Right, I should probably look at this. Oh, you thought this game would be something silly, goofy, not so serious. Oh no, it's super serious. It's like, one of the things on the Steam page says, uh, be aware that there, this is murder. There's murder in this. <laughs> be warned, there are dead people for the murder mystery. But yeah, this is... I'm already fascinated, and I feel like we're... Like, I'm on chapter four. I know there's at least... I'm pretty sure it's 11? chapters in the base game and I feel like they're going to get harder as they go along so I'm I'm very excited anyway revenge ah uh ah -uh. and oh that's so pretty we, we just got uh, uh dandelions I was gonna say daffodils that, that's the wrong plant we got dandelions oh is this a locked room murder the door does not open yeah it's not much of a locked room murder because the, the window is clearly open Oh, hello? Huh? Alarm! Alarm! A break-in! The watchman, the watchman has noticed. 
the watchman's alarm rattle. We've got Henry Parker, the watchman here, with a spear, who has just noticed there's been a break-in. Because shards of glass lie in the mud. Okay, so the window was broken. Was it broken on the way in or out? No, I would say in. This is going to be the way in if the door was locked. Because if it was the way out, you could just unlock it from the inside and jump out the window. Okay. Yeah, I love that there's just two barrels in the in the roof, yeah. I feel like that's probably normal. It's meant to be, like, just a storage area. Ooh, there is a trapdoor in the ceiling. Oh, you could get around. You could use the roof to get through, to get in without having to go through the door. The door does not open. All right, oh, that one's got, a uh, like, bluebells. An empty bed, not warm. Okay, so nobody slept in this bed. But there could have been someone in here who used the trapdoor to head into here, do a murder, and then jump out the window. Maybe. Oh, window here? Oh, there's someone outside. Oh! <laughs> Why did that bugger give me a note when he knows damn well I can't read? Oh, wow. Well, you've got a piece of stale bread. You've got a an old rusty half of shears. And this this poor person was given the note. When they don't know how to read. That's, that's so kind and considerate. So we know whoever's responsible here knows how to read. I mean, for a start, because they wrote a word on the wall. That proves that it's someone who can read. <laughs> So uh, this this person did not do the murder here. Uh, you can lie low for a couple of days in the old oarsman place down at the docks. Okay. Right, and this door seems to be door window. Window technically a door sometimes. Yeah, that window is shut. Trap door in the ceiling. Can't really see anything in the attic because it is so dark. But uh, we can go downstairs from here. Don't know if there's anything else. If there is, we'll find it afterwards. Oh, wow, huh? Oh, I, I, I love what they've done with the place. I love the decor in here. I'm here for the music though, this is great. Here in the Little Mermaid, we got a real mermaid up here. Suspended to the ceiling with a, with a narwhal and a boat. Right, what have we got in here then? At the Little Mermaid Inn! Amazing Evans' musical performance. On September 9th, event shall commence circa 11pm. Well, we know it's past then now. <laughs> Just like, yay! Definitely no murder upstairs. Everything's fine here. It's all, yeah, it's already 25 past 2. I'm guessing this is like 2am then. This is, it's gone really, really late now. It's the middle of the night. It is 2.25 a.m. And they're still going. They're still going for it. Yeah, listen to this though. It's so good. I love tavern music. Right, what else have we got in here? We've got Wanted. There's a Wanted poster for Robert Redruth, who is an escaped convict, with a reward of 50 pounds. That's, that's a lot of money. And here we got the tabs. All right, Green has a tab for some wine. Breach has a one for three glasses of wine, four glasses of wine, three glasses of wine, one glass of wine. Oh my goodness, and a you can raid. Hi, you. Welcome in. Welcome you. Welcome, kittens. Wow, I'm so glad you joined on this scene and not um the the definitely. A live person upstairs. Um, hi! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Oh, my model's so cute! Oh, thank you! I've got my chibi model out today. I'm, I'm, I'm repping the chibi times because it, my brain is so big, I get all the brain cells. Oh my goodness, I just got a, a double raid. <laughs> oh my goodness, no, I, hello as well! Welcome in! Welcome in, raiders! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Oh wait, that would have been so funny if you raided Nui and then Nui raided me. Just 
Lirial one bongo, Lirial one bongo, Lirial one bongo. Oh my goodness, thank you so much! Welcome, welcome! Welcome in everybody, welcome to uh... We got, we got a, we're in a tavern at the moment. We got this, this funky music going on. It's the amazing Evanses. They're going. <laughs> Wait, you wanted to, oh, that's so funny. I've done that before. I've, I've actually raided someone once who was about to end their stream. And then they, they were like, wait, I was about to raid you. How dare you raid me? <laughs> but I'm so glad you, you both ended up here. I feel, I feel honored. I feel so honored. Thank you so much. But welcome in raiders. Welcome to anyone who's new here. Hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink haired cat girl from the UK and I love comfy games and puzzle games. And um, this game's um, not really comfy, <laughs> but there's a lot of puzzles abound. I'm, I'm playing a uh, murder mystery deductive reasoning game at the moment. It's a game called The Case of the Golden Idol and I'm trying to figure out why these people have been dying. There's been a few people dying, and I am doing my best to figure out what is going on in here. <laughs> is that a terrifying mermaid monster? No, don't worry. That's, that's just decoration. The name of this place is The Little Mermaid. We're all, we're all just jamming out in The Little Mermaid. It's an actual mermaid fighting a narwhal on the, the ceiling. It's... I don't know, I think it's great decoration for a tavern like this. I had such a such a moment when I came down the stairs for the first time. I was like, this music's great, what is happening up here? But yeah, it's just the way things are decorated. But yes, I will do a little warning. I will do a little content warning for anyone who is here. I, I forgot to do it before the game. Uh, so I just, I just copied what's on the Steam page for this game. <laughs> But yes, this game features freeze-frame depictions of murder crime scenes rendered in the style of pixel art, and there are visual or text references to alcohol and tobacco news. News? News use. Tobacco news. What's the news today? <laughs> but yes, uh, this, is, this is a murder mystery game, and there will be a few scenes where you look at it and you're like, oh god, what's happening there? But uh, if anyone wants to stick around, you are welcome to stay here. I'm trying to make it as comfy as possible. <laughs> Even despite the subject matter. But it's been such a clever game so far. It's so cool. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just jamming along to the amazing Evans's at the moment. Like, look at this. The amazing Evans's musical performance. It started at 11 p.m. and it's already 2.25 a.m. in the game now. They've been going for a while and they are still at it. <laughs> But yes, thank you so much for the raids. I, I hope you both had great streams. I hope you had lovely streams. And uh, if you have to head off to rest or get some food or a drink, please don't feel like you have to stick around because you raided. But uh, if you do want to stick around for a bit, um, I'm figuring out what's going on here and I'm going to start talking to everybody. Also, Lumsav, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. Oh, you played the game. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. I am so blessed. Blessed mod team. <laughs> thank you so much. But, uh, gotta run, but have fun. That's absolutely fine. I, I know it's super late for you. Especially because I'm I'm pretty sure you also lost an hour of sleep last night. I, I think Europe was the same time as the UK. But, uh, yeah, I hope you get some good rest. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. And anyone who decides to stick around, I hope you enjoy your time here. I'm... I realize how weird it is to say when I'm playing a murder mystery game, but I still aim for a comfy time. Yeah, <laughs> we're all just chilling. We're relaxing. I've had a relaxing weekend. It's been nice. Uh, did we just have our daylight savings? Yes, it was last night. It's always so weird because our daylight savings is always the last Sunday in March, and then when the clocks go back again, it's it's always two weeks different to North America Daylight Savings. So there's like a month or so every year where the, the times are like an hour out and then it just goes back to normal again. <laughs> but yeah, it, that happened last night. Uh, the clock ticked over from, I think it's 1.59 a.m. to 3 a.m. So we missed an hour. We lost an hour. Oh, I feel that so much with Dead Space too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I hope you enjoy your time here. Um, 
don't don't mind um whatever's going on up here we're, we're just uh don't don't worry about that we are here for the amazing Evansons. we don't need to worry about whatever's going on up here i just realized there was something i could grab what could i grab up here oh no it's just the door okay the door that doesn't open yeah we're here for the the Evans. <laughs> the, the, the change in tone is it's incredible oh it's so good but yes i've only just stepped downstairs so <laughs> if you two had raided like five minutes earlier you would have joined to that scene upstairs <laughs> so i haven't had a look down here yet i've I looked at these two posters on the wall and had a look at everyone's tab and yeah, I still need to investigate whatever's going on down here. Uh, gives you over the garden wall vibes. Oh, yeah, like the music. I can see that. Yeah, it's just like, we're so back. It's Jova. We're so back. <laughs> like, just listen to this. They're so good. going for it with the violin <laughs> okay all right oh mother forgive me i will never gamble with something so dear to me again oh my goodness another raid <gasps> it is raid night today oh my goodness <laughs> georgie hello welcome in welcome in come on in come on in i just got a double raid and now it's a triple raid welcome in Come along, come along. Um, we're, we're kind of investigating murders at the moment, but we're having a break to listen to the amazing Evans playing the violin. Like, listen to him go. We're, we're jamming here. <laughs> Georgie and friends are camping in the stream. Come on, everyone's welcome to camp here. There is plenty of room. Set up your tent wherever you like, so long as people can get past. <laughs> but yeah, welcome, welcome. I hope you had a good stream. To anyone who's new here, hello! I'm Liri, I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK, and I love comfy games and puzzle games, and um, this game has dead people. <laughs> so maybe not the comfiest game I've ever played, but it's such a cool game. It's such a cool puzzle game. I've been having such a blast with it so far, and I'm only on chapter four. Like, I'm pretty sure all of the chapters I've done so far are the ones available in the demo in the free demo for this game. Yeah, we have plenty of marshmallows left over from Outer Wilds. Yes, just make sure you have them crum crunchy. Crunchy ones. Uh, you have to ask, did daylight savings make me forget my own stream time? No, I I actually, I'm always like super aware of when the clocks change. Oh, it almost did for you. <laughs> yeah, I even made sure to, uh, to include it on on my schedule graphic for the week. I was like, clocks change today. It's gonna be BST instead of GMT. We're changing from normal time to British summertime. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm always like super aware of time zone changes because of being a streamer. But I did have to remind Xander. <laughs> Uh, when when Xander woke up this morning, I like saw him go past my door and I was like, Hey Xander, how'd you do without the hour of sleep? And he was just like, Oh, that was tonight. I did wonder how it got to be 4am so quickly. <laughs> he just didn't even realize. Which is quite funny to me. Also, Mr. Hardgrind, thank you for following too. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy your stay here. And yeah, it's... There's so many little details. I love games with like things to spot like that. It's so good. They're, su they're such good games. And Sue Valhoun, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome, welcome. Oh, this background music is traditional Irish. Nice. It's good music. It feels like the kind of music I'd expect in a place like this. Like, I'd... it fits the scene very well. But yeah, thank you so much for following. Welcome, welcome. In we go. But yes, uh, for anyone who is unaware, Bum, bum, bum. Let me do the, the content warning thing again very quickly, just to make sure people know. Uh, this is this is a murder mystery game. There are there is pixelated blood, and there are people 
who are not alive anymore. So if that's something you're bothered by, please, please avert your gaze. But if not, we're gonna figure out what happened here. Or I am. I'm <laughs> Me and my, my big brain, my, my giant chibi brain, which is just crammed full of brain cells and monster energy. Which I shall have now because I just realized I missed a hydrate posture check because it happened when, when I was in the middle of talking about the game. Dima, hello, thank you for the hydrate and posture check. Let me have a sip of my monster. I've got my monster energy ultra zero. No, it's not the zero, it's the fiesta, ultra fiesta. I've got the mango flavor today. It's the one up there, it's, it's the one above my head. That's the one I'm drinking. <laughs> but yeah, the music in this is so good. It's been so great so far. All of it has fitted really well. Yeah, oh, fun fact, when time switches, uh, trains in Poland literally stop for an hour. Why? Wow, that that's wild. That's wild. I mean, I guess it would be nice to have a break, but that would be so annoying. I guess just don't travel at that time. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just, I feel like daylight savings is just really annoying more than anything. Like, I'm really thankful for things like uh, Discord timestamps. I basically use Discord timestamps to know what times are in different time zones. Because <laughs> it does all the converting for you, it's so handy. But yeah, it's so confusing. Yeah, super handy though. Yeah, oh, because it's easier to manage the schedule. I get, yeah, just, eh, whatever. <laughs> I guess so. I can, I can see the logic in it. I, I disagree with it, but I, I do see the logic. Anyway, let's see what we've got down here, down in the the Little Mermaid. Right, we know we've got Amazing Evans' musical performance. Uh, the event shall commence at 11 p.m. It's now 2:25 a.m. And we've got Robert Redruth, who's an escaped convict, who's got a reward of 50 pounds, which is worth thousands of pounds in this day and age because this is set in like. I don't remember the year exactly. It's an early year. Wait, I've got my conversion thing open. 1786, that's when this is taking place. <laughs> it's taking place in 1786. So when you see things like one pound, that's worth a lot of money in these times. Also, Cleocentric, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome, welcome. Welcome in, I hope you enjoy your time here. Welcome in, more like welcome tavern. <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. That was really bad. Please don't go. <laughs> and Cool Cat Alley, thank you for the follow as well. Right, I was looking at this before the raids happened. We've got the tab here, so we've got some names. We know that Green has four glasses of wine on tab. Breach has three glasses of wine on tab. And Blair's only got the one glass of wine on tab. I don't know if anything else was written here and it's been like erased. Like maybe someone paid their tab already. But these ones have not, so I'm guessing that's these three over here. <laughs> yeah, oh, love that the barkeep is carving in sync with the music. Yeah, it's like almost whittling in time. Oh, they're going for it though. They're all playing cards over here. Let's have a look. Okay, uh, September 9th. Uh, the dandelion room is Willard Wright. It, okay, it is our, it is our guy. It is who I thought it was, who has been unalived upstairs. And then in the forget-me-not room is Ash Blair. Oh, so Blair is one of the, the three down here. Blair's the one who's had one glass of wine and has not... I, <laughs> I forgot about the change in music when I got, like, the, the complete tone change, just... Oh, it's so ominous. Right, anyway, from the letter we got, I figured this was Willard Wright. I figured it was it was him who has who was in this situation now. But now we know that um it's Ash Blair? Was it? Yeah, Ash Blair is the one staying in this room up here, but the bed has not been slept in, and the window is shut and the door doesn't open as well. So that's interesting. 
Unless there's someone who was like hiding in the trapdoor in the ceiling. Because like the first thought would be that kind of implicates Ash Blair a bit, but I'm pretty sure Ash Blair has probably been down here the whole time. Very interesting. Right. Where did that blasted boy go? I really need a piss. Oh, this, this poor guy. He has a large kitchen knife. He has a partially peeled lemon. Oh, he's, he's not whittling. He's not whittling. He's, he's peeling a lemon, but he's been doing that for however long now. He's got a, a ring of various keys and a note here. Okay, we've got Oscar Boyton. We know this guy's Oscar then. And I'm guessing he's in charge of the tavern. Dear Oscar Boyton, it has come to our attention that the good owner of the Little Mermaid offers services to those who want to transfer products that are less agreeable to the authorities. Ooh. I will combine three days. If you still have some spare space in your gym barrels and you are willing to earn extra money, reach out to me. Mmm. Who sent that? Ooh. Interesting. Can I go in here? Okay, the door to the street is shut with a latch. Okay, so that's very secure in here now. Let's have a look at Evans again. Oh, mother, forgive me. I will never gamble with something so dear to me again. Mm, I'm guessing Evans has probably lost something playing cards, maybe. Well, Evans has the violin, a Navajo folding blade, and a key. Okay. We are just playing away now. Right, let's let's see if we can figure out who these three are then. We've got a lot of names. We know this is Evans. We know this is Oscar Boyton. We know Willard Wright is um, not alive upstairs. But the other names, we don't know who matches who, so that's going to be interesting. Snapperfish, thank you for the follow too. Welcome, welcome. Why does a musician have a folding blade? A I feel like everyone in this game has a blade of some sort. <laughs> it's more of like a self-defense thing, I think. I feel like it makes sense. You go along to play at a place like this, you you want to make sure you can defend yourself if a, a tavern brawl starts or something. I don't think that's like super suspicious. Maybe the fact that it's such a specific blade might be relevant to something. But yeah, I'm not immediately suspicious. All right, who are you then? Just deal the next one. It's all luck anyway. All right, you've got three shillings and two pence. You've got a key. You have got a dagger. You've got a hand of cards and a note. Oh, okay. Remember, you as an agent of our trading company have to reflect its values to the fullest. One, never be late. The client leaves the port on the 10th. Two, be persuasive. Do not take no for an answer. We must get the client's product. Three, be effective. Once you have the product, deliver it to me immediately with the servant boy. Most importantly, no matter what you do, be mindful of our reputation. Our names must remain spotless. Hmm. Hmm. The port was mentioned earlier. With this... The... The beggar on the streets collecting sticks who doesn't know how to read has got a note here saying you can lie low for a couple of days in the old oarsman place down at the docks mm Hmm. very interesting right so you're clearly working with this uh quote-unquote trading company which is definitely very legit possibly even the one who sent this note Oh no, the, no, because this is dated September 8th. 8th. I'm pretty sure it's the 10th today. No, it's the 9th. No, it's technically the 10th today. 8th. It's just ticked over into the morning of the 10th. Thank you for the 8th. It's, uh, it's like 2.25 a.m. And this note was written and it said, I will send this September 10th. So he wrote this last night. And we also know now that uh, Willard Wright is a proud beast initiate. <laughs> There's some cult stuff going on here. But yeah, that that means that this note... 8th, 9th... Yeah, they, they're not coming by yet. 
said they'll come by in three days, so they're not here yet. Bum bum bum. And then... Yeah, most importantly, be mindless of our reputation. Our names must remain spotless. Client leaves the port on the 10th. Oh, and the fact it says here as well, once you have the product, deliver it to me immediately with the servant boy. I think they probably got the product and have sent the servant boy off with it because he's here just like, where's where's the blasted boy to, to take over? I'm guessing to cover the stand here, that would be the servant boy. So I think whatever this guy was here for, I think he's got it. And he's waiting for the servant boy to return to make sure that everything's gone smoothly, perhaps. Right, how about you? Be calm, John. He was a perfect gentleman. He bought me a drink and then retired upstairs. Right, you have got a stiletto blade. You've got a key. You've got two shillings and four pence. A hand of cards. And to Annie! We've got her name! This is Annie. To Annie, you are beautiful like a rose. For you I will take any blows. Annie, you are like a glass of wine. Your hair is very fine. I will find gold in a mine, if that makes you forever mine. Your piglet full of love. Wow. What a poet. Yeah, that'd win me over. That <laughs> no, what a, what a way with words. Rhyming wine with fine and mine and mine with a different meaning. Amazing. What a what a what an amazingly written love letter. Who is this piglet though? Anyway, over here. Tell me, what does that man have that I lack? Okay, he's got a hand of cards, he's got seven pence, he's not doing very well with the gambling at the moment. He's also got a key and a small sword. You just straight up brought a sword in here, okay. All right, he was a perfect gentleman. He bought me a drink and then retired upstairs. And just deal the next one, it's all luck anyway. Okay, this is interesting then. Let's have a look at the table. What do we got here? So there's the three glasses of wine. That makes sense, there's three of them at the table at the moment. And what does this say? Oh. We've got initials, we can work with this. Anyway, I don't know how to play cards. <laughs> but I don't think I need to know how to play cards to know that um, minus 10 compared to 10 is probably not very good. Anyway, we know this is Willard, right? So here we've got AG. Well, we know that the Ash is Ash Blair, so AG, I'm guessing, is Annie Green. I think we've got her surname. She is Annie Green. And then here we've got ME. So that's going to be Evans. And Evans lost pretty dramatically. That's that's going to be why he's so he's moping over here going, I'll never gamble with something so dear to me again. So I wonder what... Ah, wait, because that match... So Annie basically just evened out with it, but Willard won and Mr. Evans lost. And so he clearly lost something important to him in the vet. What? Oh, maybe the, maybe this pocket watch was Evans's. And this is what he lost in the, the gamble with the To My Dear Morris. Cause that feels like it would be quite a, a sentimental thing. Hmm. Because the only other things are like the ring and the walking cane. And I don't think a walking cane is super valuable. And we saw him with the ring before, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, I think we did. So yeah, I think that pocket watch is probably Evans's. And so the fact that Willard has that in his belongings, I feel like that would... That would frame Evans for murder, but I don't think Evans did it. I I don't know if it's I'm just being convinced by the, the violin music because I like the music so much. <laughs> but I don't think it was him. 
Right, let's have a look at the next game. The next game is AG, so we've got Annie again. I think Annie Green is easy enough to guess here. And then we've got JB. So that's going to be something... Oh, we've got Reed and Blair here. No, we know it's Ash Blair, so it's J. Breach. We still don't have a first name, but we know it's a J. Breach, I think. And then that's going to be Oscar Boyton. Wait, so maybe he's not Oscar Boyton? Mm. And that's going to be Ash Blair. I ended up losing. And then that's J. Breach. And Annie Green. Annie's just been doing all of these. Right, I think this is the part where I should probably start actually using thinking mode and putting things together. <laughs> so let's go over here. Here we go. There are empty slots. Right, we can start with Annie Green. I think Annie Green is a good starting point. I think she's just been playing all these games. I think she's been enjoying all of these games. And then up here we've got Willard Wright. And then I think we have Maurice Evans. And he lost the dear pocket watch that was given to dear Maurice by gambling and not having any money and having to give that away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's popping off with the violin. He's clearly been playing that since like 11. I think he's the one with the most solid alibi here. Oh, I think I, you think I'm playing the game as it should be played for it to be fully enjoyed? I'm glad. I'm, I'm enjoying it so much. I'm enjoying it so much. I'm liking going through and getting as much as I can before I start going into thinking mode, because, like, just as soon as I click in here now, I'm just like, we're seeing that a fight ensued upstairs and someone got stabbed, so it's like, hmm, I see you. Anyway, J... Yeah, I think AB is going to be Ash Blair. And then these ones are going to be Breach. But I don't have a J name yet. And then we've got Oscar Boyton. Right, so I just need to figure out this J name, I think. Anyway, I can I can start with a few little things. I know that's Willard, right? I figured out that this is Annie Green. This this is the poor, depressed Maurice Evans who's lost his pocket watch. Oh, you played with highlights on and it was significantly easier or quicker. Ah, yeah, see, I was I was wondering at the beginning, because I'm really bad at discovering things sometimes. But I wanted to when I realized that like the mouse over changes when you can click on something. I was like, yeah, I think that's enough for me. I think I can figure it out with that. Right. Right, yeah, the rest is like figuring all of this out. Bum, 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 bum. Right, because we can probably figure out from here as well, like, who's not playing at the time. Like, the main question is, when the murder would have happened? Because it would have been sometime after this first match where Willard Wright uh, went upstairs. He, like, played the one match, clearly won the pocket watch from Maurice, and then head upstairs. So then this match would have been happening, and then this match would have been happening. So it's just the question of figuring out who every everyone is. Have a look at this again. Yeah, dear Oscar Boyton. Like, the fact that he has this letter makes me think that he is Oscar Boyton. And he does have all the keys. Also, like, I'm looking at this. Uh, Robert Redruth, the escaped convict. Could that be you? I'm, I think looking at the face, that could be him. And so he's being given, like, a place to lie low because he's on the run? Hmm. But yeah, I still don't have a, a J name. Oh, John! Wait, John! 
She said John. We have the name, John. Yeah, this is John then. This is gonna be John Breege. That guy is John Breege. And then Ash Blair is the one who is currently losing. But we know he's like involved with the smuggling. So he's the one who bought that room so that he can smuggle the goods out of the the loft. But he hasn't slept in there. So then I think this is Robert Redruth. We know that's Henry Parker the Watchman because we just saw his sign saying his name is Henry Parker. And so then, yes, this has got to be Oscar Boyton. Yeah, we got them all. We got them all. Hey. <laughs> I went full detective mode. Yes, I'm, I, I can just eye zoom. So then we got John Breeders. Yes, there we go. Everything is filled in correctly. Deductive reasoning. Right, here we go. So I'm now thinking at this part with the stuff we have. The fact that the door is locked. We look at this. We do this first match. And then if we're doing the second match here, Oscar Boyton took part in that match, but then the third one is these three down here. Would he have had time to run back down? Because I feel like Maurice Evans has probably been playing music. Yeah, they, they were playing cards with loud music. So I think these three... Oh, wait! Unless it was Ash Blair. Ooh. Ooh, I've got a theory now. I've got a new theory. Uh, yes, also, uh, please be aware of the, the no back seating tag. It's like, it's, it's very easy to like theorize and accidentally get something right. And if you end up doing that, that means I don't get the chance to get that discovery myself. <laughs> so I, I like to ask to avoid backseating, if possible. But uh, yeah, we do have a link to the, the Golden Idol in this part, because uh, the, the, the murder victim in this chapter is the one who was bequeathed the idol in the last guy's will. He's, he's the one who made someone spontaneously combust in the last chapter. <laughs> And he's been murdered this time, and the idol is gone. Anyway, my theory now is, I think... I think the murder happened. I think it was Ash Blair. I think what happened was... Ash Blair crept into Willard Wright's room through the trapdoor while these three were playing cards downstairs. And ended up stabbing Willard, because I think Ash Blair would have been uh, heading into the, the loft, to, heading into the attic area to try and get the, um, the stuff from the roof because we know that he was trying to smuggle things out. And it would have been really easy then for him to be trying to smuggle this stuff out. Maybe got caught by Willard. Wait, no, hold on. Because we're going up here, it says revenge, RR. Ah, ah. That's framing. He's framing him. Ooh. Oh, yes, also, hello. If, if you're mentioning viewer count, uh, please. Please don't mention view account. It's uh, it's very high at the moment because I'm being featured on the Twitch homepage as part of uh, Twitch's promotion for Legendary Women. Twitch's Legendary Women campaign, which is for the the whole of March, but uh, the numbers aren't going to stay that high. It's 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 all it's all fake. <laughs> I'm just pretending to be very popular. It's it's going to go back down to normal next month, but uh, it's it's been really nice. I feel like it's been lovely how people have been discovering me through it and actually sticking around and following and staying in the streams. It's been very, very nice. But yes, I do have view counts turned off 
while I'm streaming, because otherwise I feel like if I was streaming and I suddenly saw it get to like a really ridiculous number, I would get really nervous. <laughs> so instead I pretend I'm just talking to 10 people like always. <laughs> But yes. Oh, thank you for the congrats too. It's it's been really nice. It's been lovely. I've I've been pleasantly surprised with how little trouble I've had. I was expecting there to be loads of trolls because you always hear about like people on the internet being awful because of the ability to be anonymous. <laughs> but I haven't had any trouble. Everyone's been really decent. Eight. 10 people. I only 8. You're right. My my trusty eight people <laughs> eight 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 and eight but yeah looking at this we've got here it says revenge rr someone is clearly eight. trying to frame the uh the serial killer that's going on but we know he can't read which also means he probably can't write so someone has framed him there. That's not very nice. And I'm wondering if it might be Ash Blair, because we know this is Ash Blair's room. It would be very easy for him to come in here, sneak over, steal the idol, sneak back, get the servant boy to go deliver it to his delivery company. That's the theory I'm going with at the moment. I think he tried to frame Robert Redruth, but he didn't realize that Robert Redruth doesn't know how to read. So I'm gonna say a fight ensued upstairs and... Oh, and Willard got stabbed with... I've forgotten what Ash's weapon was, hold on. He was stabbed with a dagger, which was then washed off in the little bowl. I think, I hope this is right. Let's see if my my theory's going on. <gasps> yes, I, I did it. I was right. My theory was correct. I feel so smart. <laughs> he, uh, wonder if there's any trans women being featured in the legendary women thing. I'm pretty sure there are. I've, I've definitely seen some trans women in the, uh, in the featured section. It's mostly just down to whoever applies. But uh, yeah, I, I remember them saying they're definitely featuring more trans people today because of it being Trans Day of Visibility. Beware, you're visible now. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been really nice. It's been a nice experience. Uh, do I always do crime solving content or just anything really? I mostly do puzzles. One of my favorite things to do is puzzle games. Anything that involves like puzzling, like logic, deductive reasoning using my brain cells. Those are my kind of games. I really like puzzle games. But uh, I also play a lot of casual games. I play a lot of like simulators. I like playing House Flipper and just talking about random stuff while I paint walls. Uh, I also like visual novels. I like things with a lot of reading where I can do silly voices. And then I start voicing all the characters like this. And then we see how nicely I can sound. I can sound very sweet and lovely sometimes. Uh, and other times I can sound like this. It's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do like a variety of things. Uh. Yeah, I guess I also do this too. Thank you for the Uru voice redeem. <laughs> Just as an example, I guess. Hi. Hello. This is my Uru voice. Don't worry, it's only for two minutes. But hi, how's everyone going? How's everyone going? How's everyone doing? Please don't go. <laughs> also, Mushy, hello. Welcome, welcome. The whole trust day of visibility, you've been in bed. Oh, well, that's okay. I see you now. You're visible now. I see you. Hello. <laughs> welcome in. Welcome, welcome. This is my Uru voice. I can't do it for very long because, uh, because my throat suffers, but it's funny. It's my brother's favorite. I do streams with my brother on a Friday. I call it Family Friday, and then we play the most family unfriendly streams, like Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I do streams with my brother, and he really hates the Uru voice. So everyone always redeems it. It's great. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> but yes, welcome in, everybody. I hope everyone has a, a good time here. But yeah, I'm so proud that ended up being right. I'm so glad. 
The squall has been fulfilled. No hints accessed. I don't need hints. I'm smart. A man going by the name of Ash Blair crept into Willard's room through the through the trap door to steal something important. But when he opened the music box, it woke Willard up and a fight ensued. In the fracas, Ash stabbed Willard and attempted to frame an escaped convict. But he did a terrible job of it. Because... Because the escaped convict does not know how to read. <laughs> so good job with that, buddy. You did great. How <laughs> is that under the Uwe title? Just a little something. Just a little something I put up there very sneakily. If anyone wants to give me a tweet. If you want to give me a tweet, I'm saving for something. Anyway, that's, that's the end of the Uwe voice. I'm back to normal again. Hi. <laughs> I think the thing that surprises people the most is there's a lot of people who think that the uwu voice is a voice changer, but it's not. I'm just doing that with my voice. I just start here and then I go up 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 and then I'm here. Hi. I can just go all the way up. I can't get very low though. Like, I feel like my my natural speaking voice is more or less the lowest my voice can go. I guess I can go like this low, this this low. I can go down to like here. Yeah, I'm, yeah. This is about the lowest I can go. I, I can't get very low. <laughs> but yeah, I. But yeah, the ooh boys, it's powerful. But yeah. Oh, he doesn't know how to read, but maybe he can write. But he wouldn't know how to spell revenge. Like revenge, especially. That's the kind of word where if you don't know how to read and write. You would absolutely put a J in there, I think. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Anyway, good job there. We did- Oh, hi! Hi, we've got more- more plot. What have we got? The Little Mermaid. Good morning, innkeeper. I heard a man was murdered here a week ago. Aye, a deranged convict did him in. Now bugger off. Tell me more about the evening when Willard Wright died. I will make it worth your while. Who's this? Ooh. The plot thickens. Let us continue to the intoxicating dinner party. What is happening in here? What is going on here? Okay. Chapter 2, The Cursed Inheritance. The intoxicating dinner party. This has got to be poison, right? This is this has got to be poison, I think. Oh, nice place, though. Look at that statue. Ooh. There's a syringe in there. Hold on. Who put that in there? Oh, no. Phoenix Wright's ancestor. <laughs> Uh, what have we got here? We've got a bunch of hats and coats. Oh, I guess I'm just rifling through all the pockets now. Let's have a look. We've got a note here. Dear Miss Richards. Ooh, wait. What was the year before? It was 1786 was when all the rest of this was happening. Now we're in 1788. Eight. So this is like two years on. Like a year and a half, I guess. Eight. March to September. Yeah, year and a half. Dear Miss Richards, I enjoyed your company tremendously when I visited your father last month. I am certain that you would wish to hear the rest of my thoughts on the shortcomings of our society. I invite you and your father to a dinner on April 8th at my manor. Sincerely, 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 Edmund Cloudsley! We've got Edmund again! Eight. Our politics guy! Also, that midman, thank you for the follow as well. Thank you for deciding to stick around. Hope you enjoy your time here. Yeah, I like I like playing a lot of games like this. A lot of things involving figuring things out and piecing them together. So uh, if that's the kind of thing you like watching, then hopefully you enjoy your time here. But thank you for all the eights. I love, I love that you're just like, okay, I could do the eight redeem, or I could do an expensive eight redeem with text-to-speech. <laughs> Anyway, it's good knowing we got Ed Edmund back again. <gasps> hey! Dear Mary, here is something for your diary from me. For you, I would fight a tiger and win. Peter Badley! 
1788, Jim. March the 5th. This is a grown man. Hey. This is a grown man who drew this and sent this. Um, that's pretty great, to be honest. That's I, I kind of love that. <laughs> and thank you for the gyms as well. Oh, hey. currently 6 a.m. for you. Oh, I've been staying up since 4 a.m. just for this. I love all the eights, thank you. But you're hit with the EP beam. That is absolutely fine. Please have a good rest. I hope you sleep well. Thank you for sticking around. But oh, oh thank you for the lurk as well. I, I very much appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed it too. The, the, the lovely <laughs> relaxing bedtime stories going on. Oh my goodness! Cassandra? Hello! Oh my goodness, I'm getting so many raids today. I feel so special. Hi! Welcome in, Mr. Check These. I hope the Tekken 8 went well. I hope you won many fights. Welcome in. We got a fight right here at the moment. Look at this. Look at this incredible art. For, for you, I would fight a tiger and win. And I believe it, honestly, looking at that. I think he would. <laughs> But welcome in, welcome Raiders. To anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri, I'm a pink haired cat girl from the UK and I love comfy games and puzzle games and murder mystery deduction games, which is what I'm playing right now. I'm playing a game called The Case of the Golden Idol and um, I'm solving some murder mysteries. So be warned, there be pixel dead bodies around here. But, uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for the raid. Oh, I'm glad you had fun with it. I'm really bad at fighting games, but I like watching other people play them. But thank you so much for bringing the raid here. I'm so glad you raided like on this screen. I love that it's like, yeah, fighting game. Look at look at this fight. Look at this guy. This guy who's like thousands of pounds in debt. <laughs> Although who knows, it's been two years. Maybe he, maybe he got over his gambling addiction and he's not in debt anymore. I don't believe it, but maybe. Oh, you had slap fights! Glad to hear it. I love to hear it. <laughs> oh, and Fianna! Oh, thank you so much for sticking around after the raid, too. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Or or night, if it's night. <laughs> but thanks for being here. And Errol Venn, thank you for the follow, too. Thank you for following. Welcome, welcome. Cute cat, that's me. That's me. I'm, I'm very cute and sweet and innocent in many ways and have never committed any crimes. Hi! <laughs> Jack didn't set up a raid message. You don't need one. It's fine. You just burst in and go, hi! <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. Uh, if you've got to go rest or like get food or drink or anything, uh, please don't feel like you have to stick around. Please look after yourself. But if you do want to stick around, I'm a murder mystery investigating. I'm currently exploring. I'm trying to get all of the clues I can get. And then I'm going to go into thinking mode and I'm going to piece it all together. But yeah, at the moment I'm just rummaging through everyone's coats. <laughs> so we know here that this is Mary's coat. This is Mary Richards. We have a name. Mary Richards is the owner of this coat. This coat has just got a box of cigars. Okay. This coat... This is an overcoat and a hat that... That looks like a really fancy hat. And then this one... This looks familiar. An overcoat and a hat. That looks like the one from the cutscene we just got. Hmm. Anyway, let's see who you are. Hello! These sure are fine coats! Okay, you've got an expensive cigar. And a note. Saying, Little Pip. Run to the city and grab me some Ash Blair tobacco and a bottle of gin. I will pay you when I am back. David. Okay, so I guess this is David's coat then. The one with the cigar box in. I, I think Little Pip may have taken a cigar on the side. <laughs> Honestly, don't blame him. Why not? Anyway, uh, which direction to go first? I have a feeling... Things may have kicked off in this direction. Yeah, you know what? Let's go straight there. Oh no, we're just in the in the house. So then, did everything kick off upstairs? Oh, oh, oh yep. Okay. 
Okay, this this is the murder scene. Here we go, and I think this may be the murder victim. Oh, it's uh, what's her name? Rose? Was it Rose? I don't remember her name. The lady's not breathing, and her face is blotched. Oh, that looks like poison to me. Right, got a fan, four pounds, and a bunch of rings. There's only five rings this time. She had six before. I remember that much. And everyone is screaming. Right, we know this is Edmund. Hi, Edmund. It's poison! Nobody touch a thing and nobody move! I'll send for a doctor right away! Alright, Edmund has an embroidered handkerchief. Ooh, a heart key. And a blue key with a square. These keys are going to be relevant. Right, let's have a look at the table. Okay, we've got a... I'm not gonna look at that yet. I'm gonna talk to everybody first. Over here. You killed my aunt, you devil! I should execute you on the spot! This is, uh, what's his face? Peter Batley. This is Peter Batley. We remember him from before. He's, he's just there with a fork, just... Fork, a pack of cards, and two pounds! The fact that he actually has money on him gives me hope. That he may have beaten his, uh... His, his gambling addiction? Or maybe he just hasn't had time to go and bet it yet. Oh my lord, this has nothing to do with me. Uh, note to self, if you get frustrated when working, remember the tale about the rich lord who married his donkey, and you will feel better. <laughs> oh, that's great advice. That's great. That's great. You've got a single shilling. You've got the same keys as Edmund. And a small simple key. And a note. Ensure that the beautiful lady sits next to me during dinner and I will slip you a shilling. Peter. Okay, so Peter Batley, who gave the note with the tiger fighting. <laughs> he slipped a shilling to the butler to make sure the butler put them next to each other at the table. And then I'm guessing that actually happened because... He has the shilling. Nice. Right, who are you? She does seem rather unwell. It's extremely upsetting. You've got four pounds and a shilling. And then this is going to be Mary Richards? This is horrible. Oh, she's about to swoon. Look at her. <laughs> Hi, Popo. Welcome, welcome. Welcome in. There's so much happening here. Ooh, look at this. Okay, we've got a bowl of salad. We've got an opaque bottle labelled water. We've got a roast. We've got a half full carafe of amber liquid labelled brandy. We've got a half full bottle of red liquid labelled wine. We've got an almost full carafe of yellow liquid containing lemons. Just, just lemons? Oh no, lemonade. I, I thought then for a second, it's like, is it just lemons themselves? Like, not even squeezed? <laughs> and then we've got a half-empty bottle of cloudy liquid labelled peptic tonic. Okay. Which of these could have been poisoned? That is going to be the question, I think. Right, let's have a look at the dinner table. Right, that's a partially eaten piece of roast with a glass of cloudy liquid and partially empty glass of red liquid. Uh, clear liquid, cloudy liquid that's untouched. Untouched salad. Partially eaten salad. Partially smoked cigar. Okay, so we know who sits here. Okay, all of these are partially empty. Right, so going by this, we know that the roast is not what was poisoned because... There's two that have been eaten and only one poisoned person. The salad has also been eaten by people, so that cannot be poisoned. A lot of people have had the wine, so that can't be poisoned. It could be the yellow liquid. It could be the clear liquid. Or it could be the cloudy liquid, because that one has not been touched. So these are the only ones where only one person has consumed them. So we can deduce from here 
what was poisoned, I think. Right, it's... Uh, we've got a lot of clues already. I do want to wait a little bit before I go into thinking, but uh, I think I know how this is going to be working. It's going to be about figuring out who sat where and then which drink was poisoned. Because it's definitely a drink at this point, because all of the foods were partially eaten. So it's got to be a drink that did it. What is that? Oh, is that just wallpaper? I thought that was like a futuristic, like, bubble chamber or something. That's really strange. Okay. We got a save! A safe containing an idol and a bag of maybe gems? Oh, but this idol's blue again. Hmm. I wonder if... Hmm. Much to think about. Because the idol was blue when Willard had it before as well and did the spontaneous combustion thing. Maybe blue means it's safe and red is like danger mode. <laughs> Ooh. We've got a safe here that's locked with a blue key, so only people with a blue key can open it. And this has got uh, two sealed bottles of cloudy liquid labelled peptic tonic and a note that says, due to the sensitivity of your stomach, I advise abstaining from alcohol for the next month. Also consider a glass of peptic tonic before eating to avoid upsetting your digestive system. Okay. We bought, oh. We also have a sealed bottle labeled opium. All right. Well, we know that the butler had a blue key. But we also know that Edmund had the blue key, so is this Edmund's? Did Edmund have the tonic then? Perhaps? Hmm. Right, we've got a desk here too. Oh, we've got lots of stuff to check here. We've got a little note here that says, Mrs. Baker, starting date 1787, August 1st. Position housemaid, yearly wage £9. £9 a year. Oof. Dear Edmund. Yeah, I think this is Edmund's office. This looks like it's probably Edmund's office. Uh, dear Edmund, this cannot continue. Since my return and move to Sebastian's Manor, he has asked for financial support seven times. He clearly is unable to take any monetary responsibility. Please, I need your help, my dear brother. Sincerely, Rose Cubert. Yeah, that's her name, Rose Cubert. Okay, so... Yep, she got the manor in the will, and we know that Peter Batley got a book telling him to do better in the will. But uh, considering he's still asking for financial support, I don't think he's gotten over the gotten over the um, the gambling addiction. Thank you for the cube as well, Cubert. It's a good name. Right, uh, dear Edmund, I like your idea. Let's send him to colonies where his violent nature will make him feel at home. What? Oh my day. Ooh. Okay. All right. I hear you are having dinner with Lady Mary and her well-to-do father, Lothar. Okay, we've got, we've got the names then. So we've got Mary Richards and I'm guessing Lothar Richards as well. If Peter and I were to join you, we could beguile him with tales of adventures in the colonies so we can ship him away. Sincerely, Rose Cubert. Right, if these two were plotting to send Peter Batley away, then I don't think Edmund would want to poison her if they, they already have, like, a plan to make him want to, like, go adventuring. So I don't think he'd be behind this. <gasps> there's stuff in the bin too. Oh! Oh, there's things that have been thrown away too. Edmund Cloudsley. Once more, you have failed to answer our requisition. This is the last warning you will receive. Your transgressions against us demand amends. The only course of action you have is to surrender yourself to our justice. Last chance for repentance, serpent, or we will unleash one of our stewards upon you. Brotherhood of Masks. I think... I think I already know what's happened here. I think Edmund was the victim here. 
I think the the Brotherhood of Masks are mad at Edmund for not doing cult stuff and keeping hold of the idol. I think they tried to poison him with his own tonic. But Rose Cubert also had the tonic? And so they accidentally poisoned her instead. That is my theory at the moment. We'll be able to narrow it down later, but I hope I'm right, because I'm going to feel so smart. <laughs> well, well, Edmund. You seem pretty pleased after the old boy passed away and a spot freed up for you in the House of Lords. Take care of those with whom you ally. I have many friends and will deal with you swiftly if you dare cross me. Lord George Bridges. Okay, actually, he's just going to have loads of enemies, I think. I think this is all people with a motive to kill Edmund. <laughs> the revolution will come for the likes of you, you crooked bastard. Soon you will pay for your sins against honest common folk with your blood. Final Vanguard. Nice. And then we got this one. Dear Uncle, I hear that you are interested in Lady Richards. I think you are too old for her. I shall court her instead. Secondly, please lend me £300. It is small change to you, and I am desperately in need of it at present. Truly yours, Peter Batley. <laughs> He's hopeless. He is so hopeless. All right. Good to know. Good to know everyone wants Edmund dead, except for his nephew who wants his money. Ooh, book here. Dr. Abram Anderton, Secret Codes. <gasps> secret Codes! Secret Codes! Secret Codes. I love Secret Codes. But he would fight a tiger and win. Wait, you're right, yeah. That's true. If that's the case, I feel like he should be able to get 300 pounds quite easily. Just, just fight a tiger. Just be like, I bet you 10 pounds that I could fight a tiger and win. It's a win-win situation, right? Such trivial ciphers as reading only the first word of every line are easy to produce on short notice, but extremely unsafe and easy to decode. Consider this simple example. Money, as denominator of value, has evolved and changed a lot. Still, in savvy hands, it is a powerful tool. Money has changed hands. I need to read these letters again. Hold on. Uh, this since Sebastian's for he... I don't think this one has a cipher. How about this one? I don't think that one either. Let's let's look in the bin. Hold on. Hmm. Right, I want something with lots of sentences. You take I. It's definitely that one. Okay, I I. Secondly, it. Yeah, it's not gonna be that. Uh, once this. You're the last. Or. Maybe not that either. Okay. Uh, I let's I if it's not gonna be that. Dear this since he please. No. I don't think it's any of these, but I think we're definitely going to need to decipher a cipher at some point. That's exciting. Oh, let's look at the bedrooms. The bedrooms, I'm guessing these are the servants' quarters. So let's have a look. What is in this pillow? A pair of twig dolls and a bottle of pink liquid partially empty. Ooh. Once your target has ingested the love potion, establish eye contact and hold it for as long as possible. In most cases, the effects will be felt within two days, depending on your own appearances. Hmm. Hmm. A love potion, you say? Right, what's in here? A knife? Four shillings and a penny? I will not change the rule that the staff member who has worked here the longest gets the bottom room. Do not bother me with such nonsense again. EC. Okay. Okay, the staff member who's worked here the longest gets the bottom room. That's good to know. I'm guessing that means, like, downstairs as opposed to here? 
for M. Mademoiselle the Laceless Count, the besmirched lover of Lusitania. Is that like a romance novel? Hmm. And then what have we got up here? We have got... Remember to take the fourth one from every... Ro oh. Okay. Raulu Cthulhu Starchild. Got a, a, an ink pot. We got three shillings and two pence. A stack of candles and fourth one from every row. Oh. Okay. Idea violent feel. I don't think it's going to be that. Have is receive us. No, I don't think it's going to be that one. Uh, pleased boy freed lords. Maybe not. Those have with care. No, I don't think it's that. <laughs> Come of... No, that doesn't even have four, four words in that line. Are you shall me small desperately? No, not that. Might be something I haven't read yet but we now have the information about ciphers and take the fourth one from every row that's going to be relevant when i find whatever it's relevant for so that's good to have i'm glad i have that right let's go downstairs okay this is going to be the bottom room this is whoever's worked here the longest gets this room so ah oh, diary dear diary this has been an ordinary day mostly spent in preparation for tomorrow's dinner event. I do believe the time has come for me to ask for a raise in salary after all these years I have loyally worked here. It is a difficult conversation to be had, but I will strengthen my will and talk to Master about it tomorrow. Well, he said no. <laughs> What's this? Horseus, the wise slave. Fables about rulers that make you think. Ah! And then we've got one pound and two shillings and an ink pot. Right, then what do we have in here? We have, oh, keys. Oh, lock picks. We have a set of lock picks. We've got Ash Blair's finest tobacco. We've got a gun and a dagger. And, oh. I guess this is where David's staying? David, clean up the barn until Wednesday. I plan to continue experimenting with the artifact. Is this David's stuff then? Ooh. Okay. Right, and what do we got up here? This room looks so miserable. Oh, but there's a lot of stuff hidden in the mattress here. There are a couple of pennies, a fancy handkerchief, and a shiny pocket watch. There is also this key, which is like filled in and silver. There's a small bottle filled with amber liquid. That That's just... That's not even really a key. That's just a stick. And two books. Uh, Monkey Man 2. Tooth for Tooth. We've seen Monkey Man before. Mm. And this one. Monkey Man 1. Monkey Man versus Striped Dark Hand. Tiger. Wait, we've heard Dark Hand before as well. Mm. Much to think about. Right, let's see what's going on here with these very happy servants. Right, let's start here. Bum, bum, bum. Of course I can give you some candles for your room, Lucia. I assume you are itching to continue reading that scandalous novel. Right, uh, dear Ada, I have to use this- oh! Oh, this letter looks like it has a cipher. Let's just read it normally first, but I think... Hmm. I have to use this letter to share good news. There is no substance to the claims that your late husband used his position to squander church money. The judge has decided to remove all accusations, and you will be no longer a target of baseless gossip. I truly and sincerely hope this will provide some comfort in these dark times, when ignorance and impudence go hand in hand. May our Lord steward over our poor souls. This is written so weirdly. Let's do the fourth, fourth word of each one. 
Uh, use substance to remove target. Sincerely, dark hand steward. Okay. Okay. All right. We know who poisoned this. Okay. Right, well, she's lending candles to this one. Uh, thank you, dear. No, I threw it out. I do not read such dirty literature anymore. I do hope our master's guests are satisfied and that Brian served everything as instructed. Right, you've got like a, a pentagon-shaped key. A small, simple key. And note! Okay, uh, the dinner party will take place on April 8th. Everything should be ready before noon. Prepare roasted boar. Young Miss Richards appears not to enjoy meat, therefore prepare some alternative side dish. Right, that's why there was the salad. So we know... We know Miss Richards is a vegetarian. What does this say? Ooh! We've got some names. We've got Smith, we've got Walker, we've got Baker, I think. I already picked that up? Nice. Yeah, I already got Baker. Right, Mrs. Smith... Two eggs and a pot of tea each breakfast. No heavy food for dinner. You are responsible for little Pip coming, uh, doing all his errands. Oh, did I not pick up little when I talked to little Pip earlier? That's funny. Mr. Walker, I am to be woken up and dressed at 7 a.m. I expect to receive my daily newspaper by noon. Okay, so the butler is Walker. Uh, Mrs. Baker, I expect all my rooms to be cleaned every day, twice on the days I have visitors. NB. Uh, David Goran's job requires that he may arrive or leave during night. No complaining about this. EC. Yeah, David Goran was the, the the stagecoach driver. So I guess he's still on the staff, so he must have been doing a decent job. Aha! Alright, here's a little a little cubby hole in the kitchen. This has got the heart-shaped lock, and this has the, the bottles of wine and the bottle of brandy. So they could be tampered with by any of the kitchen staff. But I'm pretty sure the wine and brandy are two of the safe ones. So I don't think we need to worry about that. We shall soon see. Anyway, what's in the pantry? All right, there's three loaves of bread. There's some lemons. There's a basket of potatoes. There's a sack of flour. There's a pair of opaque bottles labeled water. There are some cut vegetables, and there is a big piece of meat. Yeah, that's just where the food is kept. Uh, the door to the outside. Not locked. Oh, no, that's her. I thought I, I thought I could look at the lock then for a second. <laughs> but no, it's, it's just clicking on her again. Right, we've got some useful information out of this. I think it's time to, to start trying to piece things together. Because I think... Yeah, remember to take the fourth one from every row. This... This is going to be the room where... Okay, this is the one who was asking for candles, because she doesn't have candles in her... in her storage thing, and the others all do. This is the one that had the note about the cipher, so I think that's her room. Uh, the one who's worked here the longest... Right, who was it who asked for the raise? Right, because Mrs. Baker, I think, is one of the newer hires. Where was that note? Wait, was he holding it? No, oh, he was holding it. No, he wasn't. Who was holding it? That was those two talking. Hiring a new maid. Bam 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 bam. Final vanguard, the Brotherhood of Masks. Peter having a go. Oh, there we go. That was asking to get the bottom room to change the change the rules.
the wise slave fables about rulers that make you think, yeah, I think this is the butler's room. Because he had the wise fable that he wrote on a note saying, remember, when you are infuriated, just think about the lord with the donkey. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is the butler's room. This is going to be where... Uh, David? Question mark? Is staying? And that's going to be the left maid downstairs, and then that's the, the maid on the right with the note in the cipher. Okay. Let's start piecing this together, shall we? Let's start thinking. All right, straight away. We know this is Rose Cubert. We know this is Edmund Cloudsley. We know this is Peter Batley. We know this is Mary Richards. And then we can safely assume that this is David Richards. Right, so then it's the names of the rest. Oh, we, kn we know this is Little Pip. Now it's trying to figure out the names of the maids. Hold on, let me double check what they have. She does still have the novel, so she lied about that, but that's okay. Okay, Lucia. I forgot to actually pick the name up. Brian. Brian is the butler's name. So we know that you are Brian. We know that you are... Which one's Lucia? This one's Lucia? So then this one must be Ada. And then the note here had all the names. So, Mr. Walker, we've got Walker. We know we got Brian Walker. So we can go Brian Walker. Oh my goodness, another raid! Hi, Max, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome on in. Oh, how did the Outer Wilds go? I hope you're having so much fun with it. <laughs> I saw you were playing it earlier and I was just like, oh, yes. Because I just finished the base game for Outer Wilds and it's... Oh. I've been having so much fun with it. I hope you are too. But welcome on in. Welcome, Raiders. Come on in. Pull up a seat. I'm solving a murder mystery. <laughs> to anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK, and I love comfy games and puzzle games, and also sorting murders. <laughs> I'm figuring out what happened here, and it's so fun to piece it all together. But uh, welcome on in. Welcome, welcome. Oh, had to resort in dabble to dabbling in some guides. Oh. oh, see, one thing I did was whenever I got stuck in one part, I would just fly to different planets. I feel like one of the, the nice things about Outer Wilds is you can completely go in a different direction and then end up discovering other things. But uh, if, that's what, if that's what makes you the most comfortable, then I hope you discovered many things. But thank you for bringing the raid this way. I'm glad you had a, a good stream. I'm glad you're enjoying it. But yes, uh, if you have to head off, I know it is pretty late on a Sunday evening. So don't feel like you have to stick around at all. But if you do want to, I'm getting close to figuring out what's going on in this situation. It's This game is so good. I'm playing a game called The Case of the Golden Idol. And it's a really interesting deductive murder mystery game. And... I've been having so much fun with it. It's so good. It's so much fun. Oh, you would stick around, but you need to make a schedule and then sleep. That's absolutely fine. That is completely understandable. I hope you can get some sleep soon. And I hope losing an hour of sleep didn't hit you too hard last night. But thank you so much for sending the raid this way. I'm, I'm glad you're having fun with Outer Wilds. I'm, I love that game. It's such a good game. But yes, thank you. Thank you for sending the raid here. Yee. Sending hearts your way too. With a magnifying glass. Boom. <laughs> but yes, good luck making the schedule. I, I hope you get some good rest soon. But uh, the raid is much appreciated. If anyone decides to stick around from the raid, uh, we're, we're getting there. We're getting close to figuring this one out and I'm excited. I just need to double check the surnames. I could just brute force it at this point because there's only two names, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to brute force it. 
Dearest Ada. There's Lucia. Th Lucia's being told to prepare the roasted boar. So that makes me think that Lucia's the one in charge of the food. Oh yeah, like she's literally doing food stuff here and she's cleaning. So yeah, Lucia's the one in charge of the food. So it's Lucia Smith. Lucia Smith and Ada Baker. Oh, two or few. No, it's not Baker. What was it? No, it is Baker. Hmm. Two or fewer slots are incorrect. Unless I need like an actual name for Little Pip. <laughs> You're responsible for Little Pip doing all his errands. Hold on, let's let's go back. Let's see what you are doing. Little Pip. Hmm. If Little Pip's doing the errands for for David. Oh, is this little Pip's room? No, this is this is labeled to David. Who's David? Hold on. David Gorin. Yeah, David Gorin is the the stage hand here, the the stagecoach driver. So that's David's room. So then this is little Pip's room? Oh, this this feels really sad. Yeah, little Pip's the one with all the monkey man books, I guess. And a shiny pocket watch and a few coins. Hmm. Why is why 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 is it treated like that? I don't want to. I don't want to just brute force and stick things in. So I want to try and figure this out properly. But uh, yeah. So Mrs. Baker has been the housemaid since August first of last year. So I guess then that makes her the newest. So it would make sense that she's got the top. Uh, the the top room then. Right, cause what was it? Uh, Mrs. Smith is responsible for Little Pip doing all his errands. Da, 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 da. That was just a note about the food. That Brian served everything as instructed. No, this is... Yeah, yeah, that's Brian. Brian Walker is the is the butler. Right, so there's the box of cigars. There's all that stuff. Yep, yep. And you bought that for David? That's David Richards, yep, that, that checks out. Right, what a, I think it might be that Pip has a, a full name. We've also got George Bridges here as well. Hold on, that was from a letter. Which letter was that? This one. Lord George Bridges threatened Edmund. And we've also got the Brotherhood of Masks, which threatened Edward Edmund. And then we've got the Final Vanguard, which threatened Edmund. And then we've got his his nephew who asked him for money. <laughs> okay, I wonder what I'm missing here. I feel like there's gotta be something. I've got Monkey Man and Monkey Man 2. And I can pick up Dark Hand and Monkey Man from there. <laughs> hmm. Right, yeah, you've got that really suspicious note that we figured out was in code. So we know who did the poisoning. It was her. Right, I'm pretty sure these names are right. I think it's going to be down to Pip having a name. Uh, 
Okay. Hmm. Yeah, doing that, it still says two or fewer slots are incorrect, so... Hmm. I might have gotten the surnames of these mixed up. Maybe they swapped roles for today. What have we got here? Ba -ba -ba, prepare roast boar. Dun dun dun. Yeah, I'm wondering... Hmm. Oh wait, so there's all the stuff in the pillow here as well. And like, the, oh, the, the love potion. I did forget about this love potion. Also, Zariad, hello! Helldive, Zariad! You're going on a quest and you need my strongest monster. How about Monster Energy Ultra Fiesta? It's very strong. Although, actually, one thing I learned recently is that it's not actually as strong as I thought it was. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, too. <laughs> thank you. I guess I'll have another sip. Feels like a party. Yeah, let's party up for democracy. I, I, I've not played Helldivers. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. But yeah, one thing I actually learned that amused me greatly the amount of caffeine in Monster in the UK is actually lower than in America. Like, for legal food safety regulations, there is less caffeine in UK Monster than there is in US Monster. And I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it until literally last night. <laughs> and it amazes me. There's like, I think it's like 160 caffeine in UK Monster, and then it's like 210 in the US. It's wild. I had no idea there was a difference, but there apparently is. <laughs> so one day I need to hit that American Monster. Yeah, it is it is quite a big difference too. It's it's not like a negligible difference. It's it's wild. But yeah, I had no idea until yesterday, and I was like, I, I ended up looking it up, and I was amazed. I also learned the, that the, uh, the Monster Java triple shot drink has 300 mils of caffeine in the drink. That's a lot. It's that's it's so much. I would I would I don't like coffee though, so I, I wouldn't have that one. <laughs> but but it's got so much caffeine. Right, I need to figure out the names. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Ba ba bum. Ba ba bum. You got your handkerchief. You're just swooning. Yeah, it's. I'm wondering if it is just the other way around for the surnames, maybe. Nope, it's not. Two or fewer slots are incorrect. Which ones are incorrect? Oh, I've probably just gotten a simple name confused somewhere. Right, so we know that Brian is definitely the butler. Brian Walker is the butler. We know that much. David Goran, we know, is not here at the moment. So we don't have to worry about him. We know Edmund Cloudsley is right. Smith and Baker, I'm feeling pretty confident on these ones being correct. Because she's cooking and she's cleaning. <laughs> Back to these. We know this is Mary Richards. And then this is her father. And her father is David. I would presume. Yeah, so Mary Richards, David Richards. I think that's right. Hmm. Wait, no, hold on. Where was the Lothar? Was that... Lothar Richards. David was the stagehand. The, the father's name is Lothar. That's the one I got wrong. There we go. Okay. Okay. It was just me being silly. But I got it. Oh, in Italy, the 500 mil one has 130. Oh, yeah. It's even less again. Oh. Oh, the music of tension with nothing happening. You say that, but there is definitely not nothing happening at the moment. This is... This is... um. 
Is she dead? The, the tense music fits perfectly. <laughs> right, anyway, now that I've gotten that little brain blip out of the way. We got this! Right, so we can start by figuring out here. Uh, we know the one with the cigars is probably the father, I think. Probably. Hold on, let's, let's keep looking. Right, well, for a start, we know that... We know that Peter and... Peter and Mary are sitting next to each other. <laughs> no, she's she's been poisoned. She's she's rather dead. She's a little bit dead. That's why everyone's in a state at the moment. But we know who poisoned her. Uh, uh, she poisoned her because she was being told to by um, Dark Hand Steward in a coded message. So we know who did it. Right, now I need to figure out who's sitting where. We know that Mary is a vegetarian, so she does not have either of these two. She's going to be sitting at one of these. Uh, I can't imagine him not having meat. That might just be... Wait, he's got a fork. Is there one that doesn't have the fork at the table? <gasps> this one! This one! That's where he's sitting. Because he took his fork with him. <laughs> so we have a starting point. We have a starting point. We know that Peter Batley is here. Because there's no fork and he took his fork with him. Oh, thank you for the headpads too. <laughs> okay, so we know here. So now we know that Mary Richards is either here or here. She has one of these two. Does she smoke cigars? I don't... I may be a bit presumptuous here. She doesn't seem like the type to smoke cigars. I don't feel like she would be smoking cigars. It may just be me talking, but I... I get the impression she's not a cigar smoker. I don't know. I could be wrong, though. Right, what else are we doing? Uh, we know that... Edmund was told to drink the tonic before meals. Oh, but also he... He can't have alcohol because of his medication, right? Yes, uh, abstaining from alcohol for the next month and having a glass of peptic tonic to avoid upsetting his digestive system. Right, so I think his seat is going to be the one that's got the tonic, but not the wine. So this is going to be Edmunds. I think I'm right with what I guessed at the beginning. I think it is the tonic that was poisoned. And I think he gave some of the tonic to Rose Cubitt as well. And that's what was poisoned. And that's what killed her because he hasn't drunk it yet. Wait, what was the other glass? Yeah, because that's a clear liquid. That's just water, isn't it? Yeah, that's just a bottle of water. He's literally just got water and tonic. Yeah, I think that's that's Edmund's seat. Right, so then at that point, I think the one with the cigar, we saw that the father's coat had the cigars. So I think that's going to be Lothar Richards. And that means that Mary Richards is going to be the other side of Peter because he slipped the... The, the butler a bit of money to make sure they sit together which then means Rose Cubert yes I got it right and here here are the sleeping quarters okay so we know you know Brian Walker is the one who's worked here the longest so he has the lowest one and he also asked for a raise and did not get it and then the next one we know is going to be David David Gorin because we saw like the gun and everything in there that's gonna be little Pip's room and then we've got Ada Baker at the top with the stuff about the cipher and Lucia Smith without any candles yeah look at that look at that I'm doing it 
And here we go. And so now we know Dark Hand Steward wanted I think wanted Edmund Cloudsley dead because of the idol and thus Ada Baker poisoned the tonic and hid the necessary key in a mattress? Hold on. The necessary key. This key? The blue key? I don't know where she'd be able to hide a key though. That's my, that's my question here. Because that's the blue key. So we know that the butler has the blue key and he also has the blue key. <gasps> Wait! Oh, I bet this is like a skeleton key. I bet this is like a master key. Is I think she copied the key. Is that the same shape as the blue key? Hold on. Hmm. Hmm. Although oh, there, there were the lock picking tools as well. Oh no, but he's got the lock picking tools. Ha, huh, I feel like I'm still missing something here. Okay, she poisoned the tonic and hid the necessary key in a what? In a pocket? Did she slip it in someone's pocket? Hmm. I don't want to guess is the thing. I don't want to make guesses if I'm not sure. Oh, that copy of the key. It's a copy of the heart-shaped key. That's a small, simple key. That's the pantry key. Okay. But uh, the key that's in here, yeah, that key there, that's a copy of the the pentagonal shaped key, the pantry key. So yeah, that's just a copy of that key. Why? Okay, that door's locked, that door's locked. Door's locked, door's locked. Okay. Oh, there's another book up here. Oh, P Platonello, Ideal Republic, Visions of a Utopia with Order and Structure. And the secret codes. I can't pick up the word cipher or anything. Hmm. Hmm. This is the only part I'm missing, and I feel like I could like a guess and brute force it, but I want to figure it out. I think it's gotta be mattress, but I... I don't know, I feel like... Mm. Uh, well, I, I may as well do that part. We know, we know who had the poison and died. Hit the necessary key and... Where? Where do you hide the key? I think it's got to be mattress out of these things, but I... That's the connection I'm missing here. No, it's not that. Would it be in a pocket? Just maybe slipped it into his pocket? Does he even have that key? Is he meant to have that key? I think she may have slipped... She may have gotten the key and then slipped it into the butler's pocket to try and frame him. So then that would explain why everyone's going mad here. Because she also said... They also both said that uh, Mr. Walker is the one who's... That Brian served everything as instructed. 
I think she slipped the key into his pocket. No, okay. Hmm. Hmm. In a salad? Did she just sneak it along in the salad? I'm... What am I missing here? Oh, to Mrs. Smith, the three years of servers. Oh, she's been working for a while then. What is that? That's so cool. Is that what she snuck it in? What did she hide it in? In a, in a letter. The key, where? I guess it could be in the roast, because the roast is like covered up. Hit the key in a roast. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. I just said a target too, so it maybe it's just that Edmund isn't the one who they wanted dead. But I think it's safe to say that they did want Edmund dead. Although it's just the, the fact that it says, mm. unless it's George Bridges who wants him dead. We will unleash one of our stewards on you. Yeah, I think that's Darkhand Steward. I think this is the, the murder plot. The last warning, we'll unleash one of our stewards on you. The note was from Darkhand Steward. I think that's exactly what happened. Dark, Darkhand Steward is the one who was unleashed. Hmm. So much going on up here. Ah! You've just got a cigar and a note to get some smokes. Is there anything else? There was the syringe too. There's like, there's a syringe in here. It's like, why? How did this get in here? Why is it there? Why, why can't I do anything with it? I want. I want to do something with the syringe. Hmm. Right, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to go to the settings and I'm going to show highlights for a second and see if there's anything I have missed. <gasps> I did miss something! I missed a couple of things, okay. Okay, I've missed some things. Okay, this is the highlight moment. I'll, I'll just use highlights when I get super stuck. Here we go. Oh, look, keys. Oh, keys for pickpocketing. Oh, that's the, that's the clue I was missing. That's the clue I was missing. There's also stuff under the bed here. There is print paint. <gasps> Down with parasites. Too long they have feasted on our blood and sweat. Okay. Okay, and there's... Something I'm missing here. No, it's I, I already got it. It's just it showed the thing because I didn't click on it in this one because I already had it. But uh, okay, this is the yeah I already had these. That's nice how the highlights work. But I'm glad that I can turn them on and off when needed. Like I'll turn them off before I start the next one. But it's handy for now. What am I missing here? Oh, it's just stuff I've already clicked on, but because I didn't click on it in here, it counts. <laughs> Same here too? Yeah, because I didn't click the name Edmund. Because I know his name. There we go. Nice! Okay, I think that's like the, the main... The, that's the clue I was missing. And because I haven't clicked on each of these individually. on oh the salad with the, the meat okay I didn't click on little pips the, the little part of little pip okay there we go that's all the highlights that is literally the only part I was missing and now it's very easy it's a 
know what happened. She hit the necessary key in a bag. There we go. And still no hints. I just needed the little sparkle highlights. I think this is a fun way to do it. I think I like doing it like this. Like, I'll just leave the highlights for if I'm really, really stuck. And hopefully not need them too much. Right, the scroll has been fulfilled. Ada Baker received encoded instructions from Darkhand Steward to poison Edmund Cloudsley. She used her ability to move freely throughout the rooms while cleaning and made a copy of the key to the medicine cabinet. She used a syringe to poison a sealed peptic tonic bottle. However, during the party, Rose asked for tonic and drank it first and died from the poison. I was so right! I was, I was right! I'm so, so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself for calling that as soon as I saw the table. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm chuffed with that one. I'm, I'm chuffed with myself for figuring that one out. But yeah, cool to see how detailed the highlights are with the golden red. Yeah, it's very interesting how if you can get a word from multiple things, the highlight doesn't clear until you've clicked it from all those sources. But it's, it's a really good way of seeing what you have and haven't done. Thank you for the celebratory doot. I appreciate it. A doot for good work. Right, back we go. That was so cool. Right, what time is it? I'm so ready to start the next one. Considering how that one took me a little longer, we'll see how this goes. I might not finish it this stream, but we can we can get started. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just be super smart. I'll just have all of the brain cells immediately for this one. Chapter 2, The Cursed Inheritance. The explosive events in the forest cabin. We've got more fire? Really? Really? Oh, Oh, look at horse. Birkham Workhouse. Right, what do we got here? We've got a box of confectionery. We've got uh, hats. They're very nice hats. And we've got a book. Henchmen for Hara in Timberbrook, Timberbrook region. Billy Cracker from the Oakwood Gang is a brawler and a robber. We've got Hardy Abe from the Birkham Workhouse who is a brawler with a cart. We've got Little Billy who is... I can't take Billy? Oh, we already have a Billy. There's multiple Billies. A uh, Hobbs Gang burglar enters through chimneys. And we've got Jack Nails, a uh, Timber Timberbrook Inn, who is a burglar who can pick locks. Good to know. Good to know. Why are people doing crimes here? Let's go in. Oh, hi! There's a lot going on in here, huh? Right, let's start with you. Ah! Right, you've got a sword, you've got that, that same ring, you've got confectionery, and you've got a loaded pistol, and a cool mask, and a hat. Right, that is a dog going rrrr. Go, coin, go! We got a little pip here! Little pip setting the dog on them. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. Okay. Everyone, you are not to visit any village or city without my permission. At no point may you disclose the location of the cabin. Oh, everyone's on the run now. After what happened at the meal, everyone is now on the run. Trying to get away from whatever's been going on here. Okay, Mr. David Gorin, you are in charge of all security and arms. Mrs. Lucia Smith, you will taste any food you cook before it is presented to me. And Little Pip is in charge of Black Beastia and Golden Doubloon. Both must be fed daily. They they sound like horse names to me. Edmund Cloudsley. Okay. Wait, no, maybe the dog is Golden Doubloon because Pip was just going, go, go coin, go. A Golden Doubloon is a coin. I think that's a nickname for the dog. I think the dog's name is Golden Doubloon. Wait, I wonder if... No, I can't, like, click on the, the collar or anything. Anyway. Ah, by the gods, what was that? Gentleman robber strikes in Westbrook. The infamous gentleman robber Walter Keane, with a number of unnamed associates, held up a coach on the southern road leading out of Westbrook. 
the scoundrel robbed the passengers of all their valuables, kissed a young lady, then left. This is already the fifth robbery by the infamous gentleman, who is, as his custom, who is, as his custom, appeared wearing an impeccable suit and a new hat in the latest city style. The reward for catching Walter Keane has been increased to a hundred pounds. I think that's him. I think this is Walter Keane. I think he is Walter Keane. Right, and now what do we got here? A scarecrow in a wooden coffin. And the man is breathing but appears to have lost consciousness. <gasps> not dead yet! It's not a murder scene yet, just maybe attempted murder. A loaded pistol, a key, five shillings and three pence. And here we have a note saying, I do not care what means you use to acquire what I need, but remember to be discreet as always. Note that I do not want it too decayed. The more recently it has died, the better. Edmund, what the heck? Edmund! You want a, a recently deceased body? Is that what you want? One of the old workhouse geezers croaked yesterday. I will arrange for a, a cart to move the corpse if you send me directions. And be quick before they bury him. I do not want to dig up that stuff. Whoa. Uh, yeah, what, what is Edmund doing now? Why are you getting corpses? What are you, what are you planning? Buddy. Buddy. Well, that's, that's not a corpse anyway. That is a scarecrow. So I don't think the corpse got delivered. But, uh... Wow. Yeah, that's just you. Okay. All right, let's let's head through to here. Oh no, let's back out. Can we go through here? <gasps> oh! That there... There's the explosion. Okay. All right. There's not fire. I'm glad to see that. But that sure is exploding. Right, you've got lockpicks, you've got a saw, you've got a gun. I finally have the location of my target. Meet us on November 10th, Friday, in the Timberbrook Inn and bring all your tools. You will get your share as we agreed. Okay, and then here we've got, you, you just have a club. And gold teeth, very nice. Okay, I can't grab any of these as words. And would you look at that? Ooh. A small weight is tied to a pulled down lever at the back of the idol. Ooh, and it's got these symbols on it. And I'm just gonna gently write those down. I don't think I need to, but I'm... I'm writing them anyway. Nice, and it's blue again this time. So did the idol do this? Oh, I see they're both wearing different hats too. That's that's convenient. Ooh, lock. Why can I zoom in on that? Hmm. So was the door barricaded, but the barricade was like forcibly broken? Like the, the edge here? It looks like this is the kind of thing that, hmm. Oh, unless it was a trap for whoever walks into the room that sets off whatever this is. And it makes all of this happen. <gasps> Hello! There's someone in this chest! Hi! With a loaded pistol! Hello, what? Hi! Alright! <gasps> oh, what do you know? Vacuum. Here we go. Uh, this simply did not work. After I aimed at the sealed vessel and activated the idol, both air and vessel disappeared. Upon further consideration, it was an obvious mistake. Okay, vacuum version two. Okay, we went from this symbol, and now we're trying this symbol, which is the current one. Attempted with this input, and it was a definite improvement. It decreased the amount of air, but curiously still did not create a complete vacuum in the sealed vessel. Why were you trying to create a vacuum? Well, I'm guessing this is Ed 
Edmund, Edmund's experimentation with the idol. We know he was experimenting. What's this one? Gold filtering. Ooh. Gold filtering. The target must contain some gold for this to work. Seawater is a suitable target, for example. However, a great deal of seawater would be required for this to yield any significant amount. Perhaps I should try it on a ship in an open sea. Okay, first step, get gold by aiming at the target. And second step, aim at an empty vessel to retrieve it. This idol can do a lot of stuff, huh? Right, is this create food? Uh, unknown effect 14. If the implications of this are what I surmise, this could be a tremendous discovery. The next step is to progress from fruit to more, to some more advanced organic matter. I must ask David to fetch me a dead body for further experiments. This is vitally urgent. Oh yeah, he's experimenting with life. Huh. Wow. Wow, so I guess he's managed to like take the life out of fruit and pass it on. Maybe try and take the life out of one person and try and put it into a body, uh, make the body the vessel. Wow, these are some intense experiments. Okay, there's our spontaneous combustion. Nice. You cannot combust the target if you have not performed the freezing beforehand. Interesting. The speed at which heat is increased appears to be influenced by how strongly I press the trigger and how long I have performed freezing before it. So there's the freezing. The freezing is just changing this first one. And freezing the target rapidly can create curious side effects. For instance, I should be careful when freezing water in a sealed bottle. It exploded and the glass shards flew everywhere. We're getting so many keywords from this. This is great. Then he... Oh! Oh, here we go. Okay. Safety notice. Upon pulling the trigger, if the glyph input is meaningful, the idol will perform the intended action on the target it can see. If the eye is red, it is ready for this hook input, and it will turn blue afterwards. If the eye is blue, you can only perform hook with a dot input, and it will turn red afterwards. Oh, so it's got to be toggled, pretty much. Huh. Huh. Okay, this is very interesting. Well, we know the idol is set up at the moment for the the second vacuum. Here, this experimental second vacuum. Uh, it doesn't complete, a, doesn't create a complete vacuum, but it makes something, and I'm guessing that vacuum of air has now. Exploded. Anyway, what's this up here? We got an apple, a rotten apple, and a green apple. Yeah, I think he pulled the life out of this apple and passed it to another apple. And he's gonna see if he can do the same with people. I think that's what he's experimenting with at the moment. Wow. Wow, this is. What the heck? What the what the heck, Edmund? Right, I'm gonna have a look at the thinking here. I think there's a lot to think about here. I think we got a lot of thinking to do here. Also, Suzume, hello! Welcome, welcome, Raiders! Welcome in! Thank you for the raid! Thank you for the gay wolf raid! I hope you had fun with Heaven Will Be Mine. I played that game years and years ago, and I loved it, so I hope you're loving it too. Thank you for the raid, come on in. Oh, and thank you for the resub as well, Dima, for 16 months. Oh my goodness, that's so many months. Welcome, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Also, Nick Ellie, thank you for the follow too, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. Uh, I'm solving a, I'm, I'm trying to solve mysteries at the moment. This one is not so much a murder mystery, this is a Everything happens so much mystery. Oh, I can look at the fire. No, no, that's that. Okay. I already looked at that. But uh, it was very good so far. Enjoying the giant lesbian piloted robots. Yeah, that's that's the the key draw to the game. 
<laughs> but yeah, I'm so glad you're having fun with it. I, I remember having a lot of fun with it too. It's been a long time now since I played it. But uh, I'm... Oh, maybe I should play it again at some point. Wait, I can... There's something I can pick up here. <gasps> the Shard of the Vase! Oh! That's something I can collect. Okay. Right, well, I feel like from here I've probably got all the... The key points. Maybe. I don't know what's going on in there, but... Yeah, I think it's time to start trying to piece everything together. Right, so here, this is going to be about what these do. We can use the notes to figure this out. Figure out what each of the, the glyphs means. Like, I'm pretty sure, judging from this... Right, this is spontaneous combustion and freezing. So I think one of these symbols means heat. Right, I think this means, like, absorbing. Like, the circle may maybe means, like, to absorb it or, like, remove. That's, like, remove, take it out. And then that is to, like, suck it out at a lesser degree. I've got to do a lot of figuring out here. Oh, how have the puzzles been? They've been incredible. This game is... It's so clever. I've been having so much fun working things out. Because it's really good at giving you all of the pieces you need, but then just going, hey, good luck figuring out how they fit together. And that's that's exactly what I want from these kind of games. It's, it's exactly what I was hoping for. So it has been so much fun. I've been having a blast. And Corosyllabus, hello as well. Welcome, welcome. But uh, yes, if you have to head off and get some rest after your stream or get some food or drink, please don't feel like you have to stick around. But if you want to, I'm currently trying to figure out what each of these symbols mean. Right, it's like these two are clearly like... I think it's increasing and decrease, decreasing. So one of them is to increase, one of them is to decrease. So I think the one with the dot is to decrease, because this is all about trying to remove all the water. I mean, to remove all the air to make a vacuum. So I think this symbol means to decrease. And then the opposite one is going to mean to increase. Because they're on a toggle. You've got to be one between the other. Oh, Bonifurious, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. You refuse to leave. Well, good, you don't have to. You don't have to re refuse your welcome here. <laughs> but yay, I'll, I'll be your dinner accompaniment. Thankfully, we're away from the the super dead bodies at the moment, so it should be safe. It should be safe for eating. But yes, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you for bringing the raid this way. And I hope you have lovely, lovely dinner. Oh wait, I just realized too as well, there's a little 34 out of 34 here. I think this tells me when I've gotten all of the words. I wasn't paying attention to that before when I was missing the bag. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to that, but yeah, it tells me when I've got all the words I need. So I have everything I need here. I just need to figure out what they mean. Right, it's like, I'm pretty sure this is increasing and decreasing. So then, this is going to be heat. One of these is going to be heat. Because it's about increasing the heat. And then I don't know if they're both relevant. What else have we got here? Right here, this is the gold one. This is gold. I'm pretty sure this symbol, we can just make gold. So the, first we decrease gold from something, bring it to the idol, and then we increase gold while pointing it to something. And it fills the vessel with the gold. I think that one is gold. Da -da -da. Gold. So then now we move on to here. Oh, maybe this one is life. Or like, yeah, because this one has that too. Maybe that's target. So this one is like, increase target heat, decrease target heat, uh, increase target matter. 
could be matter. I don't have like just life as a word here. Oh, this is this is the one that was clearly about like experimenting with life and death and stuff. So that is curious. Yep, yeah, and red means it's in increase mode. Blue means it's in decrease mode. And they have to be toggled. Ah, uh, well, not to point this out, but for those of you that are in here, your feelings are valid, you deserve to be happy, and someone that breathes the same planet air as you do believes you to be awesome. That's so true. It is so true. Hi, Blue Dragon Shaman. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome in. That is such a lovely, wholesome message while I'm trawling through a book like how to decrease life <laughs> right it's like I'm pretty sure this is about it says unknown effect but considering there's like a rotten apple and a, a a very nice fresh apple I think that is about transferring life between things so then I'm like maybe it's just matter right I think that symbol is heat anyway it's like increasing the heat and then hmm right because the thing I'm trying to figure out at the moment is the fact that this has the same symbol here as this one so I'm wondering if this is about the target no this one is just aiming at the target anyway so I don't think that's relevant. Maybe this is like what you use when it's a living thing. So that could be matter. So it's to adjust the matter. Hmm. Let's try let's try making that one matter. For now. Because then here we had the experiment with the vacuum like just decrease matter made them both disappear but then this one decrease something else it decreased the amount of air but didn't make a complete vacuum so maybe that means air it's like decrease matter just made it all go because all of the matter went but then decrease air Yes! Oh, I feel so smart right now. <laughs> oh, I feel so smart right now. Yes. This is so good. Oh, curling up in the corner trying not to look cute and definitely not pet-like. Well, on only if you want to be. Anyway, you don't have to curl up in the corner, though. You can come right out right out in the open. We've got blankets. Set up blankets everywhere for everyone. Also, Pineapple Incorporation. Hello! How's this game? This game is incredible. This game is so much fun to figure out. Like, if you like puzzles, if you like logical, deductive reasoning, this game is incredible. It's so good. It's so good. It's making me feel so clever when I figure things out. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's really good so far. Right, it's time to identify all of these people. This is going to be the fun part. Oh, Sophia! Hello, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. Right, let's start with Little Pip, because we know who Little Pip is. And we know who Lucia is. Lucia Smith. So then, I'm trying to remember what David Goran looked like. I've fully forgotten what he looked like. But I think he may be the one who was clonked over the head. Let's go have a look. These are clearly some of the people who are on the run here. Eight. Ah, oh, your version of lurking. Oh, I hope you have a good lurk. Thank you for stopping in. And thank you for the eight and the hydrate too. I'll have a sip of my monster. Jim. The monster has been sipped. The brain cells are replenished. And uh, hearty Katarina, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. Welcome on in. Welcome in, everybody. Lord, there's a lot happening at the moment. But we're figuring it out. Also, I think I concluded that the dog's name is Golden Doubloon. And then the horse is going to be Black Beastia. 
So I'm gonna put that in. I'm pretty sure this is Golden Doubloon because Little Pip is going, get him, coin! And I think that's a nickname for the dog. Right, I think this is... I think this is David. I've forgotten what he looks like, but I think he looked similar to that. I think this is David. So I'm gonna put him in as David Gorn. Right, anyway, we know our gentleman... Gentleman thief is Walter Keane. The question now is gonna be the rest of these. Like, we had our nice little... Little booklet out here. So we know that uh, Billy Cracker is a brawler and a robber. We know that Hardy Abe is a brawler with a cart. So I think we can deduce that Abe is here. Because I think Hardy Abe is the one who brought the cart here. Berkham Workhouse. Uh, little Billy is a burglar who enters through chimneys. And Jack Nails is a burglar and a picklock. Okay. And look at those hats! Very fancy hats. Right, so who's in here? Right, I'm guessing this is the brawler because he's got a club. I think this is Hardy Abe. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. Okay, I think that's Hardy Abe. Because there's two brawlers, but Hardy Abe is the one with the the cart, which is how they got here. And then there's another two in here. So the question now is, who are these? Is this Edmund? Is this actually Edmund? Did he just shave his head? I think this might just be Edmund. He's like fully shaved and gone all out on the the robe situation. I'm so used to seeing him with his really long hair that I wasn't sure, but now that I'm looking, I'm like, yeah, that is Edmund. So now we just need to figure out who you are. Oh, you've got lockpicks. Lockpick, saw, pistol. Bum, 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 bum. Yes, bring all your tools. Yes. So that's going to be... What was the name of the one with the tools again? Ha 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 ha. There, that's going to be Jack Nails. Jack Nails? I got him. I got it all right. Yes. Deductive reasoning at it again. <laughs> right, now we just fill all of this in. Right, so Edmund Cloudsley needed a corpse. Hmm. Okay, who did he message? Well, either way, they... They delivered a... Coffin. Okay, I need- I need to double check here. Yeah, one of the old workhouse geezers croaked yesterday. Okay, so I will arrange for a cart to move the corpse if you send me directions. I think this is Hardy Abe. I think he messaged Hardy Abe, knowing that he has the cart and he's at the workhouse. I think Hardy Abe is the one who tried to scam him here. So... Hardy Abe, along with accomplices, delivered a coffin. Upon entering... Hmm. How was he hurt? I don't think he was stabbed. I think he was clubbed over the head. So I think, uh, upon entering... Hardy Abe suddenly clubbed David Gorin. Meanwhile, oh, meanwhile, Edmund Cloudsley increased the amount of air in a sealed vase. 
when Hardy Abe and Jack Nails entered the room, the vase exploded and killed them both. That's so cool. I feel so smart for figuring that out. <laughs> I love this game. The scroll has been fulfilled. To gain entrance to Edmund Cloudsley's secret forest cabin, gentleman robber Walter Keane pretended to deliver a corpse to Edmund for his experiments. On entering the cabin, the robbers ambushed the servants and Edmund locked himself in his study. While the robbers were sawing through the lock, Edmund prepared a trap with the idol that killed two of the intruders. Yeah, that was a fun one to figure out. That one was so fun to figure out. I did miss the part about soaring through the lock, but that makes sense now. With how it was, like, broken through. Nice! Oh! And we got a scarecrow! More information! Show me! What are we, what are we learning? Then, Sir Coroner, the bandits accidentally set off my master's laboratory chemical ingredients. What happened afterwards? I managed to fend the rest of them off, but my master, Lord Edmund Cloudsley, got caught in the blast which severely disfigured him, and soon afterwards he died, bless his soul. Edmund died? Okay, but did he? Okay, but did he? I'm conspiracy theorying now. What if he figured out a way to, like, take take the life and then give himself more life than... Hmm. 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 The experiments. I'm curious. This game is so good. This game is so great. Also, Pastor Medusa, hello! Welcome, welcome. I don't believe that he's dead. Not with all this stuff going on. I don't think he's dead. Oh, what is happening here? Chapter 3, The Ascent. The strange practices of a secretive society. What is happening here? Okay, we're going. The strange practices of a secretive society. Well, we saw a mask like that on the wall of Willard's room earlier, so... Ooh! I've got a little hobbit hole. Right, first of all... Ooh, the, the bush is rustling. Oh! A hat. A clean new coat, a loaded pistol, list of hats, a sword. <gasps> this is the... This is the gentleman thief. A shabby formal coat, a coil of rope, a dagger. To David Goran for reliable service from EC. Ooh! David, the gathering will be on March 14th. To follow our plan, we should be there at least two hours before midnight. The target will arrive in full costume. Grab rope and weapons. WK, is David working with WK? Mm. 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 You too. <gasps> nice tattoo. Uh, the tattoo depicts a hand and an eye. Okay, well... Sorry, mate, you're stuck in there for now. Uh, is there anything else? Ooh. I thought I saw, I, I saw something here. Footprints. More footprints. <gasps> They're different shoes. They're different shoes. <gasps> this one, these two are dragging something. Okay, so one leaves that way, one leaves that way. They return dragging this guy into the bushes. Yeah, these two dragged him into the bushes and then they left in different directions. Ha, huh, interesting. Okay, right, let's um let's just head in here then, I guess. Oh wow, okay. No, oh, the music really is so ominous now, huh? Ooh. Brothers wear masks appropriate to their house. Okay, the dark hands have the hand. The proud beasts have the lion. The water snakes have the snake. That makes sense, though. I'm very glad that the masks are very easy to identify with the names. 
Our brothers wear robes appropriate to their rank. So three eyes is a master, two eyes is a steward, and one eye is an initiate. So outside we have initiate dark hand. Good to know. Oh, thank you for the hydrate as well, Pastor Medusa. I will have a sip on my monster. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. This is so great. Right, what do we have here? Ooh. Okay. Masters. I ventured on the Order's mission to reclaim our fire-breathing relic and, with great resolve, punish the despicable enemy. I, with a few brave companions, fearlessly entered his hideout in a remote hunting cabin. But the devil had prepared a treacherous trap and an explosion slaughtered my dearest friends as we entered his study. Thanks to my sturdy physique, I survived the blast, only to be assaulted by the enemy's lackey, assassin warrior David Goran, and a pack of bloodthirsty hounds. <laughs> yeah, a pack of hounds, the, the whole one dog there. After an hour of fight, I received numerous deadly wounds, in spite of which I prevailed and defeated my assailants with my martial training. I discovered the enemy's dead body, slain by the trap of his own making, but no trace of the relic. I am forced to go into hiding, because the government's watchmen are tracking me. Once I have recovered from my deadly wounds and shaken off the watchmen, I will send you the next report. May the griffin awaken. Walter Keane. He sure is exaggerating there, huh? <laughs> he should have played that up to make himself sound better. Right, what's the next one? Next letter. Masters. I must apologize a thousand times for my absence, but my road to recovery was full of peril and valor that cannot be sufficiently conveyed in writing. The government cogs and spies chased me tirelessly, and I was forced to seek refuge in Aquitania to recover from my still dire wounds. There, I finally bested my pursuers with the help of Lazarus Hurst, a young resourceful gentleman whom I met in a remote manor one dark winter's night. Not only did he earn my trust by stepping into the fray against the villains, but he turned out to be well-versed in the arcane arts, of, of course not yet close to your skills. I have finally recovered and plan to return to Albion. I suggest that Lazarus would be a fine addition to the Order. I vouch for him and will invite him to undergo the appropriate trial. May the Griffin awaken, Walter Keane. <laughs> May the Griffin awaken, may it not, please? I don't like the sound of this Griffin. <laughs> Right, and the third one. Ooh. Illuminated Masters. I object to the admittance of the individual Lazarus Hurst to our brethren. I submit that our dark hand brother, Walter Keane, who vouches for him, cannot be trusted because he is a liar and a thief. I am certain that on dispatching our enemy, he kept the golden fire breathing relic for himself. Nothing will move me on this. He must produce the relic, apologize personally to me, and afterwards be expelled from our brotherhood. Sir Geoffrey Sinclair. Ooh, it's fighting in the order. Right, let's go upstairs first. Let's see what's up here. Oh! Oh, you know what? Let's, let's go downstairs first. <laughs> let's go downstairs first. Ooh! What do we got here? We have... He has a house on his back. He is eating... food. There is a fish in the house. Okay. Okay, very, very cryptic. Very nice. What the heck is happening? Oh, those brands! Prepare to receive what you have earned. Oh, hello. Okay, brother. A member of our order has proposed a new candidate to join our brotherhood. Our brother's trustworthiness, however, has been challenged. Therefore, we have decided to take measures to resolve the fate of these individuals. If the brother proves himself, he can vouch for the newcomer. If the newcomer survives the appropriate trials, he will join our ranks. You are summoned to join our gathering on March 14th and fulfill your role in the rites of the brotherhood. Council of Masters. Okay, nice. We've got a nice little eye brand here. We've got the, the Proud Beast brand here. And two rings. Time to be branded with the, the Proud Beast 
stuff? I have signaled to Griffin who I am. I accept my fate, whatever it may be. What do we got here? Ooh! Okay. Uh, Inception. You must endure the tests of 1234, administered by Proud Beast Steward. Transition. You must endure the tests of 1234, administered by Water Snake Master. Evaluation, you must endure the tests of 1234, administered by Dark Hand Steward or Master. And admission, you must endure the tests of 1234, administered by any master. Right, okay, well. Well, that's the snail, because he's got his house on his back. That's eating, that's like a fish in a house, and that's two people. Hmm. hmm. Ooh, could it be this one? It might be this one. Like, we've got the snail for number one, we've got the hourglass for number two, we've got the water for the fish for number three, and then the star for number four. Like, the star of the sun, perhaps? How would that be an hourglass? I'm not sure. But uh, this does look like the admission portion. So then we can surmise that this is probably a master. Hmm. Okay, let's keep looking. Let's head up here now. What is happening in here? Are you dead? The man in the mask is not breathing. Okay, yeah, he, he dead. I love these masks, wow. Okay, so it's clearly gonna be, one of them is Dark Hand, one of them is Proud Beast, one of them is Water Snake. I would guess then that the red mask is Proud Beast because of the, the one with the red mask having the, the Proud Beast brand. But I could be wrong, so I won't guess too much yet. Like two cups on a stone altar. They contain some wine, but are almost empty. Let's have a look at these before I start looking at people. Okay, done when an accuser has challenged a defender. Oh, challenged. Both drinkers must be barefoot. The substance is added depending on the severity of the accusation, including deadly poisons. Right, add substance to one of the cups. Defender chooses first. Accuser chooses the remaining. Both partake in wine cups. Wow! So basically, it's like, if you accuse someone of something really bad, it is pure luck whether you survive or not. That, hmm. Although I guess in, in this, like, cult atmosphere, it's like, divine intervention will ensure that only the correct one survives. Or something like that. That's, that's terrifying to think about. <laughs> well, this one died, either way. The griffin has spoken. Yep. The griffin has spoken. There, a tray with a small vial of unknown substance. Wow, I wonder what this substance in a bottle with a skull on the top could be. After someone's been poisoned. I have no idea what that is. The griffin has spoken. Right, a silver tankard with some red wine in it. Let us await the results from the chamber below. There's a ceremonial sword from this one. And you have a ceremonial scepter. The griffin has spoken. I like the stained glass window too. Terrifying, but very cool. Right, so what else is here then? Ah! Ritual of Squabble. Only initiates can be defender and accuser. The sword must be borne by any dark hand. Required decorations of the hall, uh, the Grim Reaper, the Never Tiring Teacher, the Feeder of Mouths. Okay, Squabble. I can pick that up. And then Conflict. Ritual of Conflict. The accuser must deeply hate the defender. The sword must be borne by any initiate. Required decorations are the Never Tiring Teacher, the Keeper of Treasures, the Mirror of the Soul. Okay, so we've got this and this. And this. Okay, so there's one on the window, there's one on the chandelier, oh, the key, and one on the book. 
So I guess we can use that to figure out which ritual this is. Ritual of Dispute and Ritual of Discord. Uh, ritual of Dispute. Only stewards or higher rank can be defender and accuser. The scepter must be borne by Water Snake Master. That looks like a Water Snake kind of mask to me. Uh, required decorations of the hall are the Keeper of Treasures, the Never Tiring Teacher, the Grim Reaper. I think it's this one. I think it's Ritual of Dispute because the Keeper of tre Treasures is going to be the key. Uh, the Never Tiring Teacher, I think that's going to be the knowledge from the book. And then that's very clearly a Grim Reaper. <laughs> I think the Grim Reaper's there. So yeah, I think we've got the Ritual of Dispute. But yeah, the Ritual of Discord is the houses of the accuser and defender stand behind their brothers. The scepter must be borne by Dark Hand Master. Uh, required decorations are the Speaker to the Blind, the Grim Reaper, the Keeper of Treasures. Yeah, I think this is the, the Ritual of Dispute. I think it's the ritual of dispute. Also, monochromatic vampire, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome to uh, this um, very happy situation going on here. Right, so from this, we know they're both stewards or higher. And the scepter is born by the water snake master. So this was a ritual of dispute. Yeah, I think it's gotta be. I think it has to be from this. Boom, boom, boom. The Griffin has spoken. Right, let's let's head on. Heading down to here. You are you are being branded clearly. Yeah, this is the admission test. I'm pretty sure because like the one is the snail because he's got his house on his back, so it's got to be one of these two. And then I don't see how the, oh, the tree? I don't see how that could connect to a tree, but I don't know how this could be an hourglass either. Hmm. Hmm. Well, inception or admission, we'll soon see. I feel like admission for the fact that he's at the branding point already. Right, well, I'm missing one word somewhere, so let's try and find that word. And then we can start fully piecing things together. Right, because we know who's taking part here. We know who these two are, because we've got the, the letter here. Yeah, this is uh, Sir Geoffrey Sinclair. Is against Walter Keane. And it looks now... Like Sir Geoffrey Sinclair lost this situation because we know that Walter Keane is a Dark Hand, and we now know that this is the Water Snake Mask. So I guess this is the Dark Hand Mask then. So that means Walter Keane passed the uh, the, the poison test. <laughs> right. Let's let's see what I can get from what I have. I'm missing one word, but. Hold on, no, I really want to find what the other word is. I'm missing, like, one thing. I've got all four of these. Master, Water Snake, Proud Beast, Dark Hand. Oh, wait, because then we know this is, uh, Proud Beast. They're both Proud Beast. Are you a master or a steward? That's the question. Council of Masters. If, if, if they're invited to the Council of Masters, then I guess they, he's also a master? Unless he isn't. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, game's a bit too loud. Well, it, it was really quiet up until this point. This is just a, a, a loud moment in the game, I think. <laughs> but I like having the music this loud. It really... It adds to the the mood of this section. Like, this whole area is so extreme. Everything happens so much. Right, well, we know as well that you are a, a Dark Hand Initiate. So why is there a Dark Hand Initiate out here? Is he the Dark... Hold on. 
Hold on. I'm 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 confusing myself now. Boom boom boom. Right, because this is all about the admittance of Lazarus Hurst. Dark and Walter Keen is is Walter Keen the one outside? What I don't I don't know what level Walter Keen is. I don't know how high up in the ranks he is. So it might end up being somebody else. Hmm. And also what David Gorin has to do with all of this too. Right, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head to thinking mode. And we're going to try and piece this together. Alright, well we know this is the ritual of dispute. It was dispute? Was it dispute? I'm, I'm already second guessing myself. Dispute. Yes. Because we've got the Grim Reaper, the Never Tiring Teacher, and the Keeper of Treasures. Yes, this is the Ritual of Dispute. Mm. There's so many gaps here. This is great. Okay, well, we can do this. We know this is Water Snake. This is Proud Beast. This is Dark Hand. Oh, and I guess the robes are different. Depending on the rank. Ooh. Okay. Well, we know this is the lowest rank. Wait, you got no clothes. That's just actual coats. Okay. Oh. I think they stole his robes and snuck in. I think that's what's happened here. Ooh, okay. Right, now I'm, I'm looking at their feet now, their shoes. <laughs> okay, so this one, yeah, this is a master. The master is this coat. That is the master rank. And then these have to be at least stewards to take part. Only stewards or higher rank can be defender and accuser, so these two have to be stewards. So that means the green robe is steward. And then this robe is for an initiate. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, we got him. We got him. Also, Artem, hello. This model's amazing. Thank you. This is my, my chibi model. This is my bean mode. I get to be a bean with a massive head that's crammed full of brain cells. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh, it's already one, but I want to... It's already one, but I want to keep doing this. This is so bad. Right, I need to figure so much out. Oh, there's so many potential things here. Right, I think this is... Oh wait, we can go back. This is a steward. We know now because of the robes, this is a steward. Administered by Proud Beast Steward. I think this is the inception test. Yeah, this is Proud Be Steward. This is the Inception test. Okay. Where is Inception? Ritual of Inception. So we know here we have a Proud Beast Steward. And then I'm guessing this is going to be Lazarus Hurst then. Yeah, successfully being initiated. Passed all the tests. Okay. Right, so then I'm like out here. Is, is this... Walter Keen? Might be Walter Keen. Nope, it's not. It's someone who's involved. It, I think this might actually be Jeffrey Sinclair. No, it can't be. Jeffrey Sinclair was the one who challenged to the roles here, so he can't be an initiate. And he's only got the one eye on the back, so he has to be an initiate. Ooh. Could this be David Gorn? Did he become an initiate after 
Uh, what's his face died? Oh, I just got home after a day socializing. Time to sleep for an ungodly amount of time. That's the best way to do it. Use up all of your energy and then get it back with a nice nap. <laughs> I hope you had a fun day, though. Thank you for stopping in here after your your day of socializing. A little bit more socializing, some some virtual socializing as well. <laughs> I think this might be David Gorham. No, it's I don't think it is. I, I'm not going to put anything here yet. Wait, do I just go really simple? I just know that this is a, a dark hand initiate? Yeah, okay, that works. Yeah, it's, this is just a dark hand initiate. I know that much. <gasps> so this dark hand initiate up here had the mask and robe stolen. I think this is David Gorin. I think he's managed to, he stole the robes and snuck in. So then this on the ground, we know this is probably Jeffrey Sinclair, who lost the 50-50, and then this is Walter Keane, who passed. And so that's that's a water snake initiate. That's a proud beast master. And that's the water snake master. Let's see if this is right. I feel so smart right now. Oh David Gorin managed to sneak in. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I, I can do this. I'm, I'm doing this before I go to sleep. Here we go. Uh, we know Walter Keane was challenged to a dispute ritual. Hmm. He, along with David Gorin, ambushed Dark Hand Initiate. So then, David Gorin, posing as Dark Hand Initiate. I think this is the word I'm missing now. I think I need another word which is going to be related to this. Uh, with a... With a tray, which... Cup had no poison. Yeah, I think David Gorin came in with Walter Keane to, to rig the cup set up to make sure he survived it. Uh, Jeffrey Sinclair drank the other cup and died. Meanwhile, Lazarus Hurst passed the inception ritual to become... Proud Beast Initiate. Okay, so it's just here now. Hmm. Gave it, giving a cup to Walter Keane. I think there's this one word I'm missing here. I think it's gonna be the, the single word I genuinely need here. Hmm. There's the poison, there's the wine. How about you? How about you? You've got the ceremonial sword. Here, da ba ba ba. Chooses first, accuser chooses the remaining. Both partake in the wine cups. Okay, I've got the poison from here. Challenged. Yeah, I've got challenged, I've got drank, I'm missing one word. I think now is going to be the time when I turn on my highlights. Because it's late. Okay, I think I've got everything from in here. I miss things from here. Oh, it's just the names again. I got all these. Okay, then I guess we go back to the I missed something from you. Oh, signaled! <gasps> I have signaled to Griffin who I am. I missed the signal there. I can grab the signal. Oh! That's what I needed. That's what I needed. And oh, I hope I had a nice stream. I've had a great stream so far. This game is so good. Oh, yeah! Still, we'll start with Obradin if you want something like this. Yeah. 
Return of the Oberdin is such an incredible game. I highly, highly recommend it. But uh, this one is, it's, def it's scratching that itch. Like, that craving for some kind of logical deduction puzzle game that I really was looking for after Oberdin. This one is really scratching that itch. It's so good. But yeah, th thank you for, for stopping in either way. But it's, it, oh, it's so great. That's the last word I needed. Oh, what did he signal with? Hold on. Wait, he signaled... Yeah, he signaled with the jug. He signaled with a tankard. Which cup had no poison? Because that's what he's holding. There we go. There we go. There we go. No hints accessed. After being challenged to a ritual with potentially deadly consequences, Walter conspired with David to devise a plan which would ensure his own safety. They captured a Brotherhood member on his way to the gathering. David took his costume so that during the ritual of dispute, he could indicate to Walter which cup was poisoned. Therefore, Walter chose the safe cup, and his opponent drank the poison and died. This is so fascinating then, I guess they're working together now. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to stay and explore just so I can make sure I turn the highlights back off. And now we're going to return to scenario selection and yeah, I'm gonna leave it there for now. We we did seven. We did seven of the cases, so I'm pretty proud of myself with how that went. <laughs> this game is incredible. Oh, it's so good at just just feeding you just enough to know what like that know that you can piece it together but without making it too easy i'm i'm having such a blast with this this is so good this is so good yeah oh i wonder if i can take things from these no i don't think so but yeah this has been incredible there we go a successful first stream of the case of the golden idol i am so, so happy I decided to play this. But uh, yeah, I, I ran a little bit over. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. I wanted to finish that case. And I, I got my <laughs> I got my last word. I didn't realize I could grab signaled. Thank you to the highlight for, for the very, very easy hint. But yeah, this is so good. This is great. But I think that's a, a good point for me to stop at until next week. So with that, I shall... Bloop. I'll head on over to here and we can find a rate target. Let's see who's online. Let's have a look. Uh, Golden Idol is shorter and easier, which could make it a better first of the two. Yeah, it is, it does seem considerably shorter. Like, Oberdin was very long and involved in, like, a big overreaching case. Whereas, like, this game, it's, like, it's very clear that everything is connected and it's all, like, one story. But it's separated more clearly into chapters. Like, it feels more sectioned off. Like, it'd be easy to just do a few chapters and stop. Whereas, Opera Din, like, you get everything. It's, it's not really a chapter thing. It's, yeah, it's easier to take breaks. I think that's what I was trying to, trying to say. And thank you for the hydrate, too. I'll have a sip. Before I end. Let me put my magnifying glass away now too. I don't need that anymore. It came in very handy though. I think I... I'm proud of myself. I spotted a lot of stuff. I'm very proud of it. Oh, also... <laughs> thank you for, for doing the tip command. I added a, a sneaky little donation bar onto my stream. Because uh, I'm, I still feel awkward like asking for donations and stuff. But uh, I, I really want to get the Outer Wilds Collector's Edition, and with shipping involved, uh, the shipping to the UK is very uh, substantial. <laughs> it, the shipping is so much, so I'm I'm just being a little cheeky. I'm just putting a little bar there, like if anyone wants to help, then it would be incredibly appreciated. But nobody has to. Nobody ever has to. That's the one thing I always want to ensure from my streams is that nobody is ever expected to pay any kind of money to be here. Like, you don't have to be a sub to enjoy it here, you don't have to donate, you don't have to be sending bits and stuff. Just being here is what I what I appreciate. It's, 
Of, of course, I, I do appreciate like subs, donations, and stuff. It means the world to me. But it's never necessary. You never have to. <laughs> like honestly, just having people here hanging out with me while I'm playing games is the best thing. It's why I started streaming in the first place. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, hundred dollars versus one hundred and twenty euros. Yeah, it's. I went into it, and I think it ended up being like, if I want to buy it, with shipping including as, included as well, it's like a hundred and twenty pounds. I think it was. It was a lot of money either way. And it's really sad because there was like, there is like a European store that was selling the pre-order as well, but they clearly only had a limited amount of them. And that sold out within a day, apparently, so can't pre-order from that site, so it has to be the US one <laughs> with the e extreme shipping fees. Honestly, it's something I'm kind of used to living in the UK. Like, I've, I've gotten used to shipping being the same cost as the items. <laughs> it's a little painful, but I'm very used to it. But yeah, it's I, I really want to get it, though, so I'm... I was just like, you know what, I'll just stick the bar there. I'll just be cheeky. If anyone spots it, that's great. If not, uh, I'll probably still end up buying it anyway. It's just, uh, I'll have to hope that the pre-orders are still happening. Uh, when, <laughs> when I get paid. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it anyway. It's, it's more just if people want to help me, it would be very nice. A, a little treat. Throw a little treat towards your Lily. But yeah. Fingers crossed I can get it. I, I will get it. Um, I'll probably order it soon either way, just to make sure I don't miss out on it. But I, it means I'm going to be really, really tight for money for a while. So, <laughs> so I, I thought I'd be cheeky. But yeah, anyway, let's find a raid target. Enough of that. I always feel awkward asking people to give me money. I'm like, you, you can, but you don't have to. But you don't have to. Don't feel like you have to, but you can. But you don't have to. I'm so bad at it. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> oh, Brushy, thank you. <laughs> Give me money. Or, or, or presents. Brushy, I'm actually wearing my, my, Miku, my Miku nighty at the moment. <laughs> but, oh, thank you. And thank you for the head pad as well, Akiri. All right, let's see who's around to raid. Oh, oh shall I raid Sylphie? I could raid Sylphie again. They're grinding Genshin at the moment. They're, I think it's... I think they're really enjoying having a PC that can stream and live 2D and play games at the same time. And they're just fully taking advantage of it. <laughs> so I, I'm going to send the raid over to Sylphie, I think. Because they're, they're fully just grinding the Genshin streaming at the moment. I think there's a special thing where if you stream 30 hours of Genshin, you get special stuff. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> But uh, they, they've already been going for six, over six hours, but I think they're going to keep going anyway. So I'm going to send you over Sylphie's way. So here we go. Here is the raid message. We're going bongos today. If you're sub, we've got the Louis bongos. If not, we will send hearts. And I'm going to send you over in Sylphie's direction. Wish them luck while they grind Genshin. <laughs> but oh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining me. This game is so fun i'm so excited to play more next week i'm i'm absolutely getting the dlc for this game it's so good it's i've been having a blast it's one of those games that really makes me feel clever and those are the types of games i like the most because i like to feel clever <laughs> but yes let's get the raid set up to send to sylphie because it sure is 1 18 a.m i should probably try and get some sleep but yes, thank you so much everyone for joining me today. I have had so much fun. It's been a very fun stream. And I I think I think things went pretty well too. I don't feel like I got super stuck. Except for like the last case and finding the, the pouch in the window. <laughs> Once I saw them, it was easy. I figured it all out. But yeah, it's been so fun. Ah, bedtime. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.